His collegiate accomplishments made him Cleveland's number one draft choice where he struggled for five long seasons. It is as a Ram, however, under John Robinson again, where Charles White has been most happy. With Eric Dickerson gone last week against St. Louis, White gained 213 yards, his NFL career best, as he led the Rams to victory. But Charles White isn't the only one whose career has taken a sudden turnaround. Doug Williams spent five seasons with Tampa Bay, leading the Bucks to the playoffs three times. But contract squabbles found him in a different uniform, belonging to a different league, the USFL. Acquired by the Redskins last year as a backup to Pro Bowler Jay Schrader, Williams came off the bench last week and led Washington to a win over the Lions. Tonight, Doug Williams of the Redskins, Charles White of the Rams, on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. <laughs> Sports presents NFL Monday Night Football. This is our 18th season, and with those years, so many of memory. on a beautiful night for football. It's a cool, quiet November evening. And of course, when you talk football in Washington, you talk the Redskins, who tonight meet the Rams from Los Angeles. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Miller Brewing Company, sole sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Training Center. By Jeep, there's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. By Norelco Razor for a close and comfortable shave. And by Citizens, no other watch expresses time so beautifully. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford, and welcome to Robert F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium. It's, of course, sold out tonight for the Washington Redskins and the Los Angeles Rams. The Redskins on top of the Eastern Division of the NFC. They are 7-2 and two and a win tonight, and they will go three up on the much-hated Dallas Cowboys, at least here in the nation's capital. The Redskins have defeated the Rams five consecutive times, and even the fact that, well, that they changed quarterbacks last week, that should not affect their play tonight. They are strong, they are pulled together, and they feel they are just starting to play this year. Meanwhile, the Rams are a troubled football team. They are 2-7. and seven. They are history as far as the Western Division of the NFC is concerned, where San Francisco reigns on top at 8-2. and two. They have a lot of problems, and I think John Robinson, even though he would never say it, would like to, well, maybe have all of those future draft picks he's collected playing for him tonight. To tell you a little bit more about the Rams, my colleague Al Michaels. Al? Well, Frank, the irony is when the season started, a lot of people thought the Rams were legitimate Super Bowl contenders because they had Eric Dickerson and they had an emerging Jim Everett. Dickerson is gone. Everett's been struggling. This is a team obviously very much in transition. The scary thing for the Rams right now is they may not have bottomed out at this point despite last week's victory over the St. Louis Cardinals. And not only that, they've got a staggering defense. They've had special teams problems. They have Charles White, of course, who did well last week, but they're worried about the future at running back. They're also an old team. The Rams have 11 players, 30 years of age or older, second most among all the teams in the National Football League. And by contrast, their rivals in the NFC West, the up-and-coming New Orleans Saints, have nobody over 30. So here come the Rams, 2-7 and seven, against the Washington Redskins with a mark of 7-2. and two. But there's only been one story, Dan, in Washington all week long. You're right, Al, and it's the quarterback controversy. And really what it involves is Pro Bowler of last Last year, Jay Schrader being benched in favor of Doug Williams. Well, if you're going to have a quarterback controversy, at least have two quarterbacks that can play. And clearly, the Washington Redskins have two. Doug Williams came in last week, a pair of second-quarter touchdown passes. He took him to a win over Detroit. 
Jay Schrader, sure he's discouraged, but every great quarterback in this league has had to ride the lumber for a while, and he's going to have to do it for a bit here in Washington. How about the players? Do they care? Hey, absolutely not. They don't care if the quarterback is black or white, tall or short. Only can he call the plays, can he throw the ball, and can he lead them to a couple touchdowns. The Redskins tonight, they want one thing. They want to continue to win. They want to go to 8-2. and two. They know the Bears and the 49ers are already there. And with five games left, it's not too early to think about who's going to be home for the playoffs. And right now, the Redskins are setting up to receive the opening kickoff on a very clear night and quite comfortable. All things considered, it's been cold the last couple of days, but the temperature at game time near 40 degrees. Dale Hatcher to kick off because of a back problem from Mike Lansford, and thus it's the first time Hatcher, who is Los Angeles' punter, will kick off in his career. And back to receive is Keith Griffin, number 35, standing at the two. So here we go before, as usual, a sellout crowd, and it's a short kick taken at the 15-yard line and run back to the 33 by Terry Orr, one of the Washington tight ends and one of the up men on special teams. And from there, will Washington and Doug Williams begin drive number one. Williams coming off the bench last week and spurring the Redskins to a seven-point victory over the Detroit Lions. Several seasons at Tampa Bay, then to the USFL. George Rogers has a groin pull, so we'll see about him. He'll start, and Monk and Clark wide, and the double tight end set up with the men up front, including Derek Grills, a rookie at left guard in a revamped offensive line. From the 33, Williams on a short roll throws and hits the tight end Don Warren. And Washington, as you know, using a two tight end setup for a number of years and a lot of motion, but for the most part this year, not throwing to the tight ends. That's just his third catch of the year. The 3-4 for the Rams with Reed, Meissner, and Doss. They lost Giroux to a knee injury, so at linebacker they're thin, and there are the four. And then the corners are Gray and Urban with Johnny Johnson and Vince Newsom the safeties. Second down and four from the 40-yard line, and George Rogers to the right side cuts it back and takes it out to the 41. Short of the first down by two or three. It'll be third down upcoming, and that means Kelvin Bryant will come into the game at running back. That, of course, changes things dramatically as the Redskins usually change into their special offensive long yardage team, if you will. Kelvin Bryant, a good receiver out of the backfield and, of course, well-respected. So Kelvin Bryant setting up with both wide receivers to the left on third down and what would be two and a half from the 41. And Williams gets buried back at the 33-yard line the ball's alive, the Rams have a touchdown. And there's nothing to indicate it's not as Wiltshire takes it in. Gary Jeter dislodged the ball from the grasp of Williams, and Wiltshire cashes it in for sex to an applauding John Robinson. And a stunned Joe Gibbs. Williams really had no place to put that ball. He had his two wides had made their moves. It was Bryant trying to get out of the backfield. He was knocked off as he tried to get out of the backfield. And Williams, or rather Williams, had just no place to put it. And a good look inside. Gary Jeter just fights off the block of Derek Brills, takes the inside. And interestingly enough, Doug Williams with that fumble gives the touchdown to the Rams. And it was a fumble last week in the game against Detroit that got Jay Schrader removed from the ball game. So right off the bat, Doug Williams makes a mistake. I know you're going to say, well, wait a minute, it's not his Instant fault that he gets sacked. Instant replay reviewing the last play. Well, how about this? Instant replay is going to take a look at that. I Dick. guess we might as well, too. <laughs> Review by replay. The, re the play stands. Fumble. Recovered by the Rams. Touchdown. He might have been considering whether or not he sort of disappeared in the pile, whether or not he would have been in the grasp or not. Well, let's take a look. Doug Williams... Well the, question was was whether, well, the question was whether or not his arm That's was moving right. forward. And no, that is a fumble all the way. He cocked it, but he had not yet started the ball moving forward. Jeter with three sacks last week. Good start. Mike Lansford, who can't kick off but can kick extra points and field goals, boots it through. A minute and 35 seconds into the game, the Rams get the initial break and lead 7-0. 
The ball must be moving forward for it to be an incomplete forward pass. Another look at Doug Williams, who initially gets a good protection. Jeter with the hustle. A close call, but the ball appeared to be stationary when he's hit by Jeter. A fumble all the way, and the big underdog has the early lead. So the Rams on top as Mike Wilcher, who's been in the league now five years out of North Carolina, scores his first NFL touchdown. And Hatcher to kick off for L.A. again. This time a better kick. And fielded after some confusion up at the eight-yard line by Reggie Branch, who was in front of Griffin. And he brings it back out to the 21. And from reverse angle, we'll see the touchdown again. Look at it again. What they were looking at is Dan pointed out is whether the arm was in motion. You you'll see it from the reverse angle, and it does come forward. But I think he was kind of pulling it in. It just depends on how you interpret it. There it is. Back, hard to tell. You see it from two or three different angles. They did not take long in deciding, Dan. It, the arm motion from that angle didn't look like he's throwing the ball. Let's look at it from behind once more. This is extremely close. You can see the cock of the ball, and the ball did move forward a bit. I'm not going to argue that point. Whether it was a throwing motion or not, I guess that's what they ruled. Or he was anticipating he was going to be hit. It's history now, and it's 7-0 L.A. And from the 22-yard line, it's Williams pump faking right, looking left, and then shooting it over the middle to the safety valve. And that's George Rogers who takes it out to the 30-yard line. They do not throw to Rogers very often. And I guess that's the key with instant replay, is whether or not the replay proved that it was indisputable evidence that it could overturn the call on the field. The call on the field was that it was a fumble and the resulting touchdown. So we would have had to see something that proved conclusively that it was a forward pass. I think we at least all agree that we didn't see that. Second down and two from the 30-yard line. And it's Rodgers close to a first down, depending upon the spot. Again, Rodgers had to come out of last week's game. He had picked up about eight or nine yards on a run and then just simply ran out of bounds and sat down on the bench with the football, and he was done for the day, and there was some question about his starting tonight. Having gone through that kind of injury, I was just surprised he even come back and play this week. Usually when you get even the most minimal pull of a groin pull, you're going to be out for a little bit, or you certainly don't want to aggravate it, or you could be in trouble for a lot of weeks. Third down and one. Jay Schrader, the backup quarterback for the moment sidelines. Third and inches, and it's Reggie Branch in the backfield with Rodgers. Didier in motion, and it's Rodgers, and Rodgers gets buried before he can get the first down. He is pushed back by Carl Ecker. Keep in mind, when you watch the Los Angeles Rams play tonight, this is a team that has been in the playoffs the last four years. You know, they've only won two games this year, but they have got a tremendous amount of pride. And look at the stuff right there by Carl Eckern, right on the line of scrimmage, and the Redskins are forced to punt. This, this is not a 2-7 and seven ball club in talent. And Leroy Irvin, the cornerback, taking on the lead blocker to make it possible for Eckern. Great defensive play. Clifford Hicks to receive. He's back at the 25, and the slumping Steve Cox rushes on, and he's out of his slump. He really booms this one from the 19 and 6. And good coverage. <laughs> and so the Redskins work very hard all week long on Cox and special teams and punt coverage, and it really pays off. I think it was a bad snap as well. The ball looked low. Cox had to go down and dig it out. Maybe that's a secret. The guy needs a bad snap to get a good one away. We'll be right back. Get his attention. The L.A. Raiders are Monday night's winningest team. The Seattle Seahawks shut them out in the Kingdome last year. They meet again next week on Monday Night Football. On a cool and very clear night in the nation's capital, RFK Stadium, the Redskins 7-2, the Rams are 2-7, but Los Angeles has a 7-0 lead, and L.A. has it for its first offensive play at the 19-yard line. Jim Everett goes back to pass and shoots it out to Charles White, and White takes it out to the 26-yard line. Picking up close to seven, stopped by Monty Coleman. Now the Rams. Jim Everett, drafted by Houston, didn't sign, and then the Rams picked him up last year after the season had begun. And they paid a hefty price for him. Gooman and White are the running backs. 
Brown and Ellard can fly, but are having a lot of trouble catching the ball. And the offensive line, and we'll see about Dennis Hara and how much he can play. He's got a bad back. It's Charles White going nowhere. Dropped behind the line by Monty Coleman. And the Rams are looking at a third and about four with 10.52 to play in the first period. One thing I think we can count on tonight is the Redskins crowding the line of scrimmage. I think they view the Los Angeles Rams as a one-dimensional team as we see Coleman making the play on White. But I think they're going to force the Rams to attempt to win this ball game on the arm of Jim Everett. You saw the Rams do this successfully in the playoffs last year against the Bears and Doug Flutie. Look for it again tonight to take away the Ram running game. Third and four, and four receivers going to the pattern, and the pass is knocked down at the 31-yard line. Damone Johnson, the intended receiver, and Monty Coleman with the coverage. And Dexter Manley, who is back, he's healthy, top of your screen. You watch number 72, just easing around. Number 75, Herb Panky, forcing Everett to get rid of much quicker than he wanted to. The pressure was there. And Manley, with his very special professional tricks. <laughs> he fought through the hole pretty well, too. Panky huh? had his yeah. jersey and his face mask. Rams uh, should have been kicking from deeper in their own territory. They got away with one. Short punt by Hatcher, and it takes a Washington bounce, and it's down at the 49-yard line. As the Redskins take over near midfield after a 26-yard punt by Hatcher following Cox's 50-yard punt. 7-0 L.A. Joe Gibbs came here in 1981. Tonight is his 99th regular season game, and as you can see, only those coaches have won 70 or more through 100. Gibbs could wind up with 72 and be behind only Brown and Lombardi. Pretty good company. 7-0 L.A., early first period. Washington with the ball at the 50. Warren goes in motion. And off play action and a lot of protection. It's knocked down in the secondary at the 34-yard line. Clark wanted an interference call on the play by Jerry Gray, reaching in to knock it down. Second down. And a superb play by the Pro Bowler, Jerry Gray. Stayed right with Clark all the way across. Doug Williams has a way of moving around back there. He seldom ever gets sacked. We saw him sacked early, but look at this play by Gray. Ooh. Coming around, very <laughs> close. Well, I said it was a superb play. He got away with it. <laughs> He's one of the better cornerbacks you're going to find around, as is his counterpart on the other side, Leroy Irvin. They were both pro bowlers. He may have been there just a touch early. That's how you get to the pro bowl. Second down and 10. Bryant stopped for a loss of one. Johnny Johnson comes up from the secondary, and that'll make it third down and 11. And so here on the visiting field, the Rams have gotten the first two questionable calls of the night, the touchdown and that last call, that, or non-call, with Gray. And when you're down, those are the kind of things that a, that a down club needs to get back in it. They need a couple breaks to go their way. That doesn't mean it's fair or that it's right, but when you're two and seven, you have a little bit of a feeling that the world is against you, and the Rams right now are looking for a break to, if anything, get them ready for next year. Third and long, third and 11 from the 48. Williams steps up and has it batted down. It'll be fourth down. Doug Reed got the hand up. Even though that was batted down, you got to look at Doug Williams, what he does so well. He seldom ever gets sacked back there, and he doesn't throw an interception either. He gets rid of it. He perhaps learned to do that when he came up in 78 with Tampa Bay. He had to do that because it got crowded in that backfield. Here's Doug Reed. And again, he slips away. And even though the ball is batted down, he does avoid the sack and the interception. Steve Cox before the strike was terrific after the strike terrible but tonight a 50 yarder on his first effort Whoa. and a flag is down as he goes down and it's taken at the 13 yard line it's fair caught there by Hicks but it doesn't matter because Jerry Gray avoided one penalty but not another he's the man that was not so subtle. <laughs> What's the old saying about playing basketball? Well, if you're going to foul him, at least draw blood. <laughs> I guess if you're going to rough the punter, you might as well knock him down. That's exactly what Jerry Gray did. Running into the kicker, number 25 defense, 
Five yards, first down. I would love to know what Jerry Gray is, how he's pleading his case, because watch this. The only way he could get away with it, should he maybe have said he touched the football, and he obviously didn't. He's saying he was pushed into him by Terry uh -huh. Orr. 87. Now that's marginal. Yeah. You mean it's marginal on Gray's defense? Yes. Uh, it's roughing the punter all the way. All the way. <laughs> you just can't touch the man when he's got his leg up in the air. He's in a dangerous position, and the Redskins get their first break of the game. First and 10, Washington at the Ram 46-yard line, and Doug Williams fires one over the middle for a first down to Clint Didier to the 30-yard line for a gain of 16. A slick read by Doug Williams. He looked quickly out to Art Muck on the outside, saw, him, saw Muck was open, and he got the big pickup, however, on the inside. And I think that last graphic we saw showing Clint Didier coming into tonight's game with only two catches, I think it shows how quickly Joe Gibbs is trying to get both he and Don Warren into this ball game. Warren only had three coming in. Didier, for the last four years, has had over 30 catches a season. And tonight, each man has one. So they had five combined coming in. And on first down, busting through the middle, goes Rogers down to about the 24-yard line. And it'll be second and four upcoming. Didier showing the versatility there. That time, he was the lead blocker ahead of Rogers, taking the key block, and Rogers gets five out of it. A year ago today was Rogers' last fumble, and he had been fumbling a lot in 1986, and then all of a sudden it stopped. He's been hurt this year, so he's missed some action, but he hasn't fumbled. 184 carries, some incredible thing, considering he runs inside in all that tough traffic. And Williams has to take a timeout here as he came to the line, looked it over, and didn't like it on a second and five. 7.56 to go, first quarter in Washington, where the Rams, on an early break, lead 7-0. It doesn't seem as if John Robinson has been around that long, but he sets a mark tonight. No Ram coach has ever coached more games in the history of the franchise. Robinson, in his fifth year, has guided the team to the playoffs in each of the previous four, but not this year. Tell you, about job, tell you about job security out there. Second down and five from the 25-yard line. End around, it's Clark down just past the line of scrimmage Vince Newsom the safety man slicing through to get the tackle it'll be third and four that play set up behind one of the skins old favorites running to the left side behind Joe Jacoby but one of the things this Ram defensive team does is flow to the football excellent team speed they're not a team of penetrators. These are guys that play behind the line of scrimmage and move sideline to sideline. A good illustration of it there. Third down and four with five receivers going into the pattern and over the middle for a first down. It's Ricky Sanders. Mike Wilcher makes the tackle. Sanders doing a good job just getting off the line of scrimmage. They tried to bat him down, pick it up right there. Yeah, he just lines up right here. It's nothing more than a simple flare pattern out of the backfield, but look how tight the coverage, and look how the throw from Doug Williams has to be threaded right in there. Little juke to the outside. He gets inside Wiltshire, and Doug Williams puts it there, and Sanders, with good concentration, stays with the football. Nothing fancy, but it still takes a good throw, even though it's only seven or eight yards. Williams is four out of six for 40 yards, and on first down, it's Rodgers tripped up by Newsom as Newsom, the fifth-year safety out of the University of Washington, comes busting through to turn it into a loss. Vince Newsom, one of the Ram draft picks that has paid off, and I say that because in the last couple of years, they've had terrible success with Mike Shad and Donald Evans, their two top picks of the last two years. Now, of course, with the Dickerson trade, they've got a slew of draft choices, but it remains to be seen if and when they'll pay off. Second and 13, as Williams throws to the end zone, touchdown, Art Monk!
Williams, so calm, so cool. Munt just made a square out on that. He stayed alive on it. Well, watch his move. Here's Art up here. He's going to go down to the five, make a break to the inside, and then back into the end zone and lined up against him. Jerry Gray just gets completely lost on the play. Watch Art sell it to the inside. Oh, rather to the outside, excuse me, and then the break into the end zone. For some reason, Jerry Gray comes all the way up and bites on the ball. Ali Haji oh. Sheik hitting the upright and bouncing back. And so that lets a little air out of the balloon. After Monk scores the touchdown, Haji Sheik, the erratic one who had that fabulous rookie year with the Giants a few seasons ago, hits the upright. And with 5.46 to play in the first period, it's 7-6 Los Angeles. Ball was handled, placed down beautifully. Sheik catches the crossbar. No pressure, good snap. He just missed kicked it. Giant stayed with him for a couple of years. Take a look at this again. Doug Williams again stayed alive on this hand. Monk really gave him a lot of help. Monk to the outside now. Gray comes up thinking Williams is going to run it. I don't know. And Monk is there all alone. How much you want to bet that Doug Williams sold that little move to the outside with a pump fake? That's what froze Jerry Gray, brought him up, and Art Monk takes it into the end zone. That's a long reception for Art Monk. This is more or less the workhorse of the Redskin receiving corps. It's Gary Clark that get, gets more of the glamour plays. Clark averaging over 20 yards a carry, and Art Monk only about 13 yards a catch, rather. So that's a nice chance for Art to work downfield and get in the end zone. You know, it's only it's only the 33rd touchdown of his career. Darrell Turner of Seattle has caught about a quarter of the passes. Has more. He has one more. Ron Brown to run it out from the goal line, and the Olympic gold medal winner with a flag dropped on the play takes it out to the 17 raven caldwell making the tackle referee tonight is dick jorgensen and he says shortly and with emphasis illegal block during the return number 52 receiving team half the distance to the goal line First down. Larry Kelm, rookie out of Texas A&M. Well, the Redskins have been flooding the line of scrimmage. Let's see if John Robinson calls a running play for the Rams this time around. I think we're going to see a lot of white jerseys right on the line of scrimmage trying to take away Charlie White. First and ten at the nine. Charles White, no room. Pushed back. Whole middle stopping him. Rich Mulat is there coming back after missing a couple of games with a bad ankle, number 57. Redskins pulled it within a point, and they do it, keep in mind, after Washington had punted and Gray ran into the kicker. That kept the drive going and the cash. Second and ten at the nine. Rams seven, Redskins six. Everett throwing and it's knocked down. Damone Johnson, the intended receiver, and the safety man Alvin Walton knocking it away. Inside, it's David Butts, number 65, all 6'7, 305 pounds of big guy in his 14th year. He just pushes Dennis Hara all the way back into the quarterback and that throw didn't have a whole lot on it. It kind of floated out of there, allowing Walton to make the play. And Manny was troubled with that knee early in the year. Shows that he can get off the line of scrimmage. He also was in there with the pressure. Third down and 10 now. Ellen in motion, and they try to trick him by keeping it on the ground, and that doesn't trick Monty Coleman. He buries White, and the Rams will kick from the end zone. It worked beautifully last week against St. Louis for over 200 yards for Charlie White. It's been tough chugging here tonight. Redskins thinking run all the way, thinking exactly right for the way John Robinson wanted this game choreographed. Well, until the Washington Redskins respect the passing game of the Rams, it's not going to change. Hatcher to kick. Eric Yarber takes it right at the 50 and pays the price after a two-yard run back. Michael Stewart. Number 23, dropping him there. And Robinson.
Robinson wondering about a possible penalty that he never got. Williams comes in, and we can tell you that this Saturday, the traditional battle, it takes place in Tempe between Arizona and Arizona State as the Sun Devils get ready to go to the Freedom Bowl when we'll take on Air Force, and that's our national college football presentation at 3 o'clock Eastern time Saturday here on ABC Sports. First and 10, Washington from the 47-yard line. Didier is in motion. And Rodgers takes it to the 45-yard line, met by the entire middle of the line, and Carl Ecker in the linebacker as well. Second and eight. Ram defense has been very shaky this year. They've given up 20 or more points in every game, and their tackling has been terrible. You have to wonder how much of a distraction was Eric Dickerson, Lee, Leroy Irvin with his financial problems and walking away from the team, calling in sick. Tough to play football with that many distractions. Second and eight, the pass is juggled and dropped as Ricky Sanders was looking upfield before the ball got to his hands. Leroy Irvin covering. So he had the reception, but he was thinking about the extra yardage and it cost him. Here's Ricky Sanders, former New England player, just a little quick hitch. And it could have got there a little quicker. That would have helped a little bit. Ricky concerned with the cornerback Irvin coming up. And again, one that should have been caught. Nickel defense in now for the Rams, and they play zone. And whenever they're not in the zone, they've blown the play. Third and eight at the 45. Rams lead by a point late first quarter. There's a flag down, and the pass is caught the 28-yard line by Gary Clark. He gets dropped by Nolan Cromwell. The Rams surged across. Looked like Gary Jeter came across, and the only question is, was he drawn or not? Well, it was Gary Jeter. He definitely got the head start. And of course, that'll be declined. Outside, number 77, defense, decline. First down. Well, it's a classic of what you can do to that zone if you have time to throw the football. Here's a pressure. That's Jeter. A little quick move, trying to get inside and get through Joe Jacoby to the inside and Williams reading it all the way as the time to unload it and just splitting the gap downfield big pickup and I think Williams is a little shaken up after the play let's look and see how he gets hit I don't know if he got hit right in the face that time but I have to wonder if he somehow didn't get a little bit more than that because coming back to the huddle he was shaking his right hand First and 10 at the 27-yard line, and it's Williams again, and he flips it out to Bryant, and he can throw it because it was a backward pass. He goes to the end zone, and it's tipped away by Vince Newsom. Don Warren was the intended receiver, but the Rams weren't fooled. Newsom and Gray were both there on him. Gray might have saved a touchdown. He read it at the last second. Good move by Warren coming downfield. He'll do a nice square out on it, and Gray was not fooled. He knocked him off and stayed with him. A lot of times teams will set that up ahead of time with the official saying we're going to throw the ball backwards. Watch for it. Don't rule it as a forward pass, but look at Jerry Gray, number 25. He is with Warren all the way. He just plays that perfectly. You just couldn't play that any better. Second and 10. That's the first pass that Bryant has thrown in his NFL career. Williams now shoots one over the middle. Gary Clark has it, and Clark takes it inside the 10. Written to the turf by Leroy Irvin. All the way across the field, Gary Clark lines up across the formation, comes on underneath that zone of the Rams. Let's take a look at Gary, start downfield, but the Rams go into that deep umbrella. He's just going parallel right between the linebackers and the safeties. Leroy Irvin trying to stay with him a couple steps behind. Williams is 7 of 10 for 92 yards. First and goal, Washington at the 9-yard line. Rodgers for a couple to about the 7 with 2-10 to play in the first quarter. He joined us late. The Rams on a fumble recovery and run by Wiltshire for a touchdown on Washington's first possession. Moved out in front 7-0. But the Redskins were able to capitalize on a roughing the kicker ball. Williams then led him to the end zone. Monk scored the touchdown, but Haji Sheik missed the extra point. 7-6, L.A. Bryant comes in, and they love to work him in close to the goal line out of the backfield. 
Clark and Bryant all to the left with Monk in motion. Second and goal. Williams under pressure from the backside throws incomplete. Don Warren, the intended receiver, and Gary Jeter got there, forcing the issue as he came in from arrears. That's the one thing Williams has done throughout his entire career. You think you've got him. You think you're going to sack him. Even with the pressure, you think he might throw the interception. He doesn't do that. He gets rid of the football. He got the ball in the direction of the receiver. He didn't risk the pass to be picked off, and he didn't get sacked. Well, it helps to be a big quarterback, Frank, as well. I mean, Doug is 6'4", 220, and that time Gary Jeter came around from behind, and you would have thought the contact would have been enough to at least knock Williams off stride. He didn't even do that. Third and goal from the eighth. Williams, pressure, throws over the middle, but only a two-yard gain. As the pass is caught by Sanders and well shy of the goal line, fourth down and on comes the field goal unit. And Haji Sheik to try to give him the lead after missing the extra point by hitting the upright. Jess Atkinson was their kicker. He was hurt in the opener, so then they signed the vagabond Haji Sheik who went from the Giants to Atlanta last year. And then had a, a couple of other tryouts as well before linking up with Washington. 22-yard attempt. And this time it's good. So Haji Sheet is now 6 out of 8 this season. And Washington takes a two-point lead with 53 seconds to play in the period. And now what we're going to have to look for as the Rams get the football offensively is can Jim Everett do anything offensively throwing the ball? He has not come along like they thought he might have, but keep in mind, too, he's only had one training camp. Al touched on it a while ago. He held out when he could not be signed by Houston a year ago. This has been his only training camp, and he has not come along like they anticipated. I think they thought perhaps he would pick up the reads better, a little less hesitant, and perhaps they thought he's even a more accurate passer than he's been. But all of that will come eventually to this man who had such a great career at Purdue. Well, they have a new offensive coordinator in Ernie Zampezi. One other problem. Well, let's face it, and we saw it the night we did the Rams in Cleveland, the receivers have been dropping balls left and right. Robinson needs somebody who can catch the football. They need a, shall we say, a large and type receiver, a possession receiver. And that shakes a young quarterback much more than it would a veteran quarterback, and I'm sure that has been a contributing factor to Jim Everett, who came in tonight passing under 50%. Four touchdowns, nine interceptions into the night. Well, if Ernie Sampisi is going to help Jim Everett, I think he can help him by calling a couple passes on first down. They're not going to run with any great success against Washington on first down. Haji Sheik kicks it down to Brown at the 5. The 20, and he can fly the 30. Goodbye. Goodbye. And right. Brown out in front, and that man won a gold medal in the Olympics, and only Green can catch him, and he oh. can't. He's in there for the touchdown. Two fastest men, perhaps, in the NFL. Yep. Darryl Green was the NFL's fastest man in 85, and then Brown won it in 86, 95 yards. And the same Ron Brown who last week fumbled and had the Cardinals turn it into a touchdown on the opening kickoff of the second half. Fourth career kickoff return for the gold medals from the 84 Olympics. Look at the wedge. Now you'll see the Redskins break the wedge, but once he finds a little opening, splits it off to the left. Now 28 is Daryl Green, and this is a great sprint. Forget Ali Hajishik, he's got no shot at all, but Green had a little bit of an angle on Brown, and Brown is carrying the football. That's one of the great sprints to the corner. Well, Daryl Green might have had the angle, but Ron Brown had the rest of the field. And while Green slowly closed the angle, Brown effectively used all the field. His extra point is good. And what's that, his fourth kickoff return? It is. Touchdown? Fourth for a touchdown. In 1985, he ran three back for scores, and he does it here in 1987. The last time he did it against San Francisco in December of 85. And with Lansford's extra point, the Rams are back on top. So the Rams not doing anything offensively, but Wiltshire scoring on a fumble return and Brown on a kickoff return, and L.A. leads by a handful. You can look at it in regular speed, and it is a little bit blinding. There is the break of the wedge. Brown reads it quickly, cuts back on Cheek, and then it's the foot race, and perhaps Zero Green could have used a little more of the field, but I'll tell you, they are both flying. Great sprinters. 
uh, Brown, who ran those three back in 85, did two of them in one game against Green Bay. So he's a game breaker. Anytime you see Green chasing somebody, you think back to the playoffs last year and when he caught Dickerson from behind. Right here on this field. Did you notice the Sheik on that time? He almost got Ron Brown. He, I counted. He got within nine yards of him at midfield. And it was 28 at the goal line <laughs> and counting. Oh, you love to have one of those back there. Funny, that's Brown's first touchdown of the season, period. He hasn't caught a pass for a score in all of 87. It's a shame. This is such a dull first quarter. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing has happened. Asher to kick off. And at the seven, that's Keith Griffin, Archie's brother. And he's taken down to the 25-yard line by Larry Kilm. Ron Brown won a gold medal on the relay team, which also featured Carl Lewis in the 84 Olympics. You call that out. Mm-hmm. Of he has not played all that much football either. He was a defensive back uh, when he started out at Arizona State. Did not play much offense at all and, of course, missed a couple of training camps because of training for the Olympics and then the Olympic Games themselves. Not much has been made about it, but it's in his mind the possibility of competing in Seoul next year. Keeping up with Daryl Green. Yeah. First down at the 26 yard line. And Haji shoots. <laughs> Anchorman. Here's Rogers. Out to the 30 yard line, and that should be the final play of the first quarter. Reggie Doss, number 71, makes the tackle. You know what's funny here is if you're one of the Ram offensive players, you're sitting over there on the bench, 14 to nothing. Wiltshire runs one in. Ron Brown runs one in. You got 14 points on the board, and you're saying, you know, this isn't such a tough yeah. game after all. No problem. Deep, <laughs> defense will go out there and say offense, hold them a while. <laughs> yeah, we're on a pace for 56, you got to think. That's the end of the first quarter. The score is Los Angeles 14, Washington 9, and we'll return to RFK Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Second period starts, and this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealer. The Great American Road belongs to Buick. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, and our crew headed by Ken Wolf and Larry Cam in the nation's capital start the second period after an eventful first quarter. Rams lead by five. Washington has the ball, second down and seven at the 29-yard line. Take to Rodgers, who blocks Wilcher out of the play, and then the pass is dropped by Art Monk. Mm, can't catch it for him. He had it right in there. Third down and seven for Washington, led by Williams. And you all know the story now with Williams taking over for Strader last week, but Strader's their guy of the future. There's little doubt about that. When you're paying somebody a million bucks a year, he's your man, eventually. Well, and Doug Williams is 32 years old, but he can play. I mean, this move wouldn't have been made by Joe Gibbs. This was no frivolous decision. First time Gibbs has ever made such a move. Third down and seven. Williams throws and a little too high and very hard and off the hands of Ricky Sanders. Again, good, good coverage, coverage by Jerry Gray and Williams had to have some smoke on that because Gray was right there and he had good position on Sanders and you saw Doug Williams make a little motion. He would have had that in perhaps into the body of Sanders. He would have had the completion. Steve Cox standing back at his own 15-yard line and Clifford Hicks Drops back at the 27 for L.A. No wind to speak of tonight. Ooh. And another beauty. He's back in form at the 22. It kicks. And a run back of about six to the 28. Dean Hamill makes the tackle. And that's a 49-yard boot for Cox, who had a 50-yard kick earlier. Let's flash back to an old Rams-Redskins game. This when the Rams were in Cleveland. This was the NFL championship game in 1945. And it was ice cold at Cleveland Municipal Stadium as Frank Dolchak of Washington, who was replacing Sammy Baugh, hit Steve Bagaris for a 38-yard touchdown reception. Washington led by a score of 7-2. But Bob Waterfield of the Rams was a rookie, and he hit Jim Benton for a touchdown here. And Waterfield was a jack of all trades. He 
also was the place kicker. He gave Cleveland a 9-7 lead, and the final was 15-14, the Cleveland Rams, and that was the end of the Cleveland Rams. They moved to L.A. the very next year. Charles White takes the ball on first down out to the 34-yard line, stopped by Charles Mann. Well, if you <laughs> took a look at that, who would you say is winning the ball game? <laughs> I think once and for all we have proven what statistics mean <laughs> in relationship to the scoreboard. Winning and covering just about every spread you could think of. Never have six total yards look so good on the scoreboard. <laughs> Second and five at the 34-yard line, and a quick slant to Brown, and he has a first down. The speedster taking it out to the 47-yard line, and a little slow and rising. Tackle made by Malak. Oh, and he's scary when he gets one-on-one. -on -one. He had one-on-one. -on -one. He pops one tackle, and you saw it a moment ago, that great speed on the kickoff. He will just flash it into the end zone. The Skins had a blitz on it. Todd Bowles, the free safety, was coming up to do some run support, and that time Daryl Green was all alone. That, that real, not uh, rather uh, uh, Barry Wilburn was all alone. Now White takes the ball over the 50 and into Skins territory, where he's stopped by Bowles. White so different than Eric Dickerson. He's a slashing type runner, a cutback runner. He doesn't have a great speed. He likes to break it back against the grain. Talk to John Robbins and say, what's the difference between Eric Dickerson and Charlie White, and he says, well, Charlie White will turn a four-yard gainer into a four-yard gainer, and Eric Dickerson will turn a four-yard gainer into a 44-yard gainer. <laughs> but he's steady, he's strong, and he has really picked up the slack. Over 200 yards last week. Second down five from the 48. Rams ahead by five, early second quarter. The up back, the full back, and that's big Mike Gooman in his eighth season from Penn State. He takes it to the 44. He's short of the first down by one. Darrell Grant, number 77, in on the tackle. Gooman, a workhorse, the fullback and special teams performer. And Darrell Grant in his seventh year out of Rice in the middle of the line. Needless to say, the last time we saw the Rams was in Cleveland. And Eric Dickerson was with the ball club. And what a vastly different team it is. And some kind of trade for the Rams. Third in the yard, and there's White diving for that yard, and a couple more, and a first down for Los Angeles at the 42-yard line. Well, when you need short yardage, you have to know where you go, and a lot of times the best way is through the air, and Charlie White taking no chances at all. That might have been a play that maybe if he gets through the line of scrimmage, like you were talking about, Frank, maybe that's something if he stays on his feet, he breaks it into something bigger, but... He took the sure thing in the first down and went to the air. First and 10, 41-yard line, moving in the Ram line, and the whistles had blown the play dead, so the rest of it doesn't matter. Damone Johnson was the man down there, but Irv Pankey caused the cessation of the play. Head start, number 75, offense, five yards, still first down. you got to know why, too, because... Dexter Manley is beating him on the outside. He is coming off the line of scrimmage so quick. Manley gets such a jump on the football, and Irv Panky now has been beaten a couple of times and almost given up a couple of sacks. Well, look how far outside Dexter Manley is, number 72. Manley's lined a good three yards to the outside of Irv Panky. When you're a tackle, you know you've got to get back off that ball and beat him to the corner. That time, Panky backed up so fast. First of all, he drew the penalty. Then he went by his own quarterback. So they drop the hanky on Panky, and it's first and 15. And it's White. You didn't say that. Dropped it to 50. No, somebody came at a booth and said that. Good call, Spanky. Panky <laughs> <laughs> on Panky, Spanky. <laughs> Dexter all over the field. This time he doesn't force the penalty. He just forces the play. He has the contain, stays at home, sandwiched up in the middle, and Charlie has nowhere to go, and Dexter, honoring his responsibility, makes the play. Yeah, the replacement teams won three games, uh, Redskins, but it gave a lot of these Redskins a chance to get well. One of them was Dexter Manley. They missed those first two games on IR, and he came back a healthy Dexter Manley. Second and 17 from the 49-yard line. Everett throwing to Goulman, and he makes the catch down the sideline, and he's tackled at the 16-yard line. Mike Goulman, seldom used 
as a receiver, Wilburn and Kaufman back there to make the tackle. I'll tell you, he had great protection. You could time that with a sundial, Dan. You sure could, and what a touch. Here's Mike Gooman right here lined up in the backfield. Simple flare and then out and up the field, but watch the throw as it goes over the top of the defense and drops in. This takes enormous touch on the ball. Mel Kaufman's going to have the one-on-one. -on -one. There goes Gooman upfield, but look at the touch between Kaufman and between Wilburn. Beautiful throw by Everett. Only the eighth catch of the season for Gooman. First down at the 16-yard line. White cuts it back and takes it down to about the 12, and it's Kaufman again. John Robinson unabashedly says, I love Charles White. He's the toughest guy I know, and White's problems this year and in the past at Cleveland in particular with drugs well documented. He was arrested in August. He fell off the wagon. He was arrested on possession of cocaine, and part of the deal with the Rams is not only to go through rehabilitation, but he goes through drug testing every single day. Second and six. White hit hard at the 10. He's about four yards shy of the first. Characteristic, though, of Charlie White trying to cut it back, and you have to admire him. He has gone through his own bitter hell, if you will, and he is come back getting a second chance so to speak a lot of players never get that second opportunity he's making the most of it yes he tries to break it back every time he doesn't have that great speed to the outside and he will take the hammering that every back knows he's going to get when he's a cutback runner and he takes it very well Charles White lining up as the sole back in this set third and four from the ten and Everett is in the oh. grasp, in the grasp of Dexter Manley. Oh, he's quick. He's changing the whole character of this game. And what tremendous anticipation of the snap count by Dexter Manley. Sometimes a young quarterback won't change up the snap count. Here's Dexter, but watch him break on the football. Watch him beat the offensive line off of the ball. The Rams try to pull out a guard to pick him off. You wonder if Jimmy Everett isn't mixing up the snap count, allowing Dexter to get that kind of a head start. Newberry tried to come out and get him and had no shot. 37-yard attempt now for Lansford. Steve Dills to do the holding. He's the backup quarterback. And the kick, despite Lansford's bad back, and remember, he can't kick off, but he can kick field goals, and that one is perfect. With 8.32 to play in the first half in the nation's capital, the Rams lead by a score of 17-9. Watch him again, bottom of your screen. Newberry tries to come out, and he is just so quick. He was by Newberry before he even had an opportunity to make the block. Thanksgiving approaching. And the Washington Redskins approaching the holiday with a mark of 7-2, and two, but down by 8 as Hatcher's kickoff is a one-hopper taken up at the 16-yard line by Terry Orr, one of the skins' tight ends, and he's dropped at about the 32-yard line. In on the tackle for the Rams is Richard Brown. I think you mentioned at the very top that Hatcher is kicking off for the first time in his career, and he's having a bit of a problem with it. Uh, this is a tough game they play in the pit. That's Doug Smith, the center. They were looking at Newsom's knee while the Rams had the ball on offense, but he's back in there at safety. First down, Washington from the 33-yard line. Didier is the man in motion. And Williams throws and off the hands of Art Monk, who has now dropped two tonight and caught a touchdown pass as well. Yeah, did you see the way that Williams held on to that ball? He held it, and held it, and held it. He looked deep, looking way downfield for Gary Clark, and now he comes back. He's in trouble. He's got a pile of rams around him, but he puts it in there absolutely perfectly. Yeah. But now, 0 for 2 on the crossing pattern. Second time tonight that Art Monk has dropped the ball that he had right in his hands. He's got a good look that time at Vince Newsom, but... A veteran receiver like Art Monk, eight years in his leg. A new quarterback, and Doug Williams has to get some help from his veteran ball player. Second down and ten. Williams over the middle, and that one is a little bit behind Gary Clark and off his hands as well. Third down. I think a good look that time of Doug Williams really guiding the football. I mean,
mean, he's had some drops, and that time it looked like, rather than being an instinctive throw, Frank, he really guided it and ended up being behind. And you know, Dan, he didn't do that for his first few years with Tampa Bay. He'd knock you over if you're a receiver. And then when Joe Gibbs and Bobby Beathard wanted to pick him up as a replacement a year ago from the USFL, they went back and looked at USFL films and videos, and they said he was a different quarterback. He has now got a touch and a good one. Third and ten, that's Monk in motion. And Williams gets rid of it. I think they... But did they call it? They did. They yeah. In the grasp. It's a sack anyway. Kevin Green had him wrapped up, number 91, back in the 25-yard line. And he just beats Mark May, the right tackle. Kevin Green is going to rush. He's going to come in from your right side, and he just blows up field. Gets around Mark May. You see May there on the ground, and a good call by the official. That time, was he in the grasp and control? Clearly. Redskins to kick now with 8.02 to play in the half. And the Rams ahead by eight. Cox is kicked, fielded at the 39-yard line by Hicks who wishes he had fair caught it. Barry Wilburn is down there, and Dennis Woodbury gets credit for the tackle. 7.50 to go in the half. Rams by eight. Very telling statistic. Yards per pass. There are a lot of numbers, Frank, that go into a, a quarterback's rating, but if you want a pretty good example of how a quarterback is doing, look at yards per pass attempt. If it's above seven, it's good. If it's under seven, it's below average. And as you can see, Everett's been well below. But tonight, he's averaging 10 yards a pass. And on first down, he's going deep, and he's going for Brown, and it's incomplete. Brown had gotten behind Barry Wilburn, and Everett hits the deck as well. Well, he's Second got a 10. Jim Everett hurt his knee. He took a shot right on his left leg. That time on the pass rush, the skins came with the blitz, and I think Rich Malott, number 57, landed right on Jim Everett's leg. And it was stretched out. He was unleashing every bit of power he had. He was all stretched out when he got hit. And ooh. Well, that's when a quarterback is most vulnerable. He has just completed his throw. He's got both feet planted on the ground. And let's take a look at this one. It is Rich Malott, the linebacker, number 57. Here's Rich right here. Watch him. He's going to be blocked. I think Newberry gets on him. He's going to go over the top on the ground and then into Jim Everett's leg. There yeah. goes Malott. No, it's actually the back that comes in. Charlie White cuts him. Ooh, oh, but yeah. you see him fall right into Jim Everett's leg. Yeah. A well-delivered football. A good throw. Look at it again. And just keep in mind, he is off balance. He, this is one you don't snap with your arm. You have to put your body into it. He stretches out, and there it is. There's the contact. And it is Malat into that left leg. And Everett grabs it instantly. He does walk off the field. There he is being helped off. We'll try to get a definitive report on the condition of Everett, but we are going to be looking now at Steve Dills. Steve Dills played during the strike, but he's not taken a snap in the past four games after starting all three during the strike. And he comes in on second down and ten. The Stanford grad gives the ball to Charlie White, and he moves to the 41-yard line for a gain of a couple. It's going to be third down and eight as they work on Everett. And we saw something very valuable right there if you're Jim Everett. He was wearing a protective knee brace on that left leg as you see them go right to the knee. And that brace, we can only speculate, certainly couldn't have hurt things any. That's interesting to you, Dan. You know more about knees than me, but they look to the outside of the knee. Well, they're looking... Wait. You notice them flexing the knee. They're testing the strength of the ligaments in his knee. Those doctors know what kind of flexibility he has in that knee, and they're looking to see if there's any more. Third down and eight, and look out, and Dills is in the grasp, and that's a sack for Dexter Manley. Well, I don't know if that play ever got underway. That, the 30-second clock may have expired. Let's see. It did. Yeah. Delay, yep. No sack for Manley. Delay. Offense. Still third down. There's Everbed. Again, the Redskins are doing what you might anticipate. They are going to try and hassle and harass Steve Dills early. You can see their men up at the line of scrimmage right there, even though they drop out of it. But you can bet Dills, in certainly a passing situation, is going to see some blitzing. And a pretty class act there by Dexter Manley, who 
had somewhat of a free shot at a quarterback. It's easy to say I didn't hear the whistle. Third and 13, and they give it to White, and Charles takes it out to the 46, but he's short of the first down by three. Good call against a blitz by the Redskins. They were bringing linebackers, and the draw call was on, and you got to think about it. What's the next quarterback down from Steve Dills? Who would it be? Would we slide over to Nolan Cromwell? Probably. Dale Hatcher to punt now with 6-14 to play in the half. Rams leading 17-9. Good high spiral. Fielded at the 9-yard line and tackled immediately is Eric Yarber. Michael Stewart gets another special teams tackle after a 44-yard punt. So the Rams and the Redskins having at it tonight and next week will be at the Kingdome in Seattle where it will be noisy, I'll guarantee you that. And the Raiders, who have dropped seven in a row, come in with Bo Jackson and Marcus Allen against the Seahawks, who are now just a game out of first place in the AFC West after shredding San Diego yesterday. They played the perfect game. First and ten, Washington from the 11-yard line. to about the 14. Wiltshire in on the tackle, and the good news from the Ram bench for the Rams is that it's a bruised knee, they are saying, and they do expect Everett to come back into the game. They were looking on the outside of that knee first, and that's where he complained first, so hopefully that's all it is. Sometimes you never know. When you're out there loose, you're warm, you just don't quite know about the knee. And I'll guarantee you, before he comes back in, the knee brace goes back on. Second and seven. And Rodgers goes down in a pile, led by Kevin Green, number 91. He's a much more aggressive Ram team than we saw, certainly in Cleveland, and perhaps more aggressive than they have been in the week since. It's a troubled team, there's no doubt about that. Not only with the Dickerson problem, but remember Leroy Irvin was suspended for a game last year. Henry Ellard had held out. A lot of the Rams angry about the money they're making. A lot of turmoil. And if you're the Los Angeles Rams, the Dickerson trade is a trade you have to make. Third down and six from the 15-yard line. And Williams going deep for Clark and undershoots him. Clark had gotten out in front of Gray, but the pass was underthrown. And Cromwell came over to help provide coverage from safety. That's just lack of work on the part of Doug Williams. He let that ball go too late for the speed of, of uh, Gary Clark. But keep in mind, he only started working with the first unit this past week. He hasn't worked with Gary Clark that much. That was all being done by Jay Schrader, whom he replaced last week, and he just had a few days to time things out with Gary Clark. And when you're going to throw a, a fly pattern, it takes a lot of work and a lot of timing. Rams have been flying in on Cox, and in fact, one time they were called for roughing him early, and it led to a Washington touchdown. And the Rams with 10 men up at the line. And they think they can get it. And they rush nine of them, and they get it! At the one-yard line, Nolan Cromwell, who blocked one last week against St. Louis, and it led to a Jerry Gray touchdown, blocks another one. They have come close on every occasion. It was almost inevitable they were going to get it. And the block comes right up the middle, too. The one place where the punter doesn't have much of a chance when it comes from the middle. If you see it coming from a side, maybe you can step one way or another. But here's what Cox sees. There's Nolan Cromwell to the left, number 21. Steve Cox has nowhere to go with the football, never even sees Cromwell. So uncharacteristic of a Redskins team. Their special teams falling apart. Well, this is going to be a heck of a drive for the Rams offensively. <laughs> Two yards. Four plays to do it. Dills is still in there. First and goal. The up back is Gulman, and he gets about six inches. Second and goal with four and a half to go, and there's a penalty flag on the play. Line judge makes the call. Offsides, number 51, 
defense lined up in the neutral zone. At the distance to the goal line, still first down. Monty Coleman. Robert Cox, you saw 72 come into your picture. Cox letting the official know he is in the game and an eligible receiver. That's he on the right side in what would be the right end spot, tight end spot. First and goal, diving in is White. No signal yet. Still no signal. If he's not, if he's yeah, not in the now end zone. it's in. Yeah, you can hear the Rams barking. They just couldn't find him. Yeah, that's right. Barry Wilburn came in and put a heck of a shot on Charlie to make it close. Who says the offense isn't <laughs> pulling their weight tonight? Well, two-yard drive. Hey, well, that was with a penalty, too. He's watch, an athlete. Watch Barry Wilburn come in from the left and make the hit. 45, watch how well he times this. That launching pad was about the three-yard <laughs> line for Charlie White. You saw him earlier on a short yardage situation. He can get some elevation and some distance. That Lansford with Dills holding, and that kick is no good. He hooked it. He hooked it, and that's a, a pretty important miss right there because that keeps Washington within two touchdowns. Otherwise, they would have need, needed at least three scores. It's 23-9 to nine, Los Angeles. And Lansford and the Sheik putting on a <laughs> kicking clinic, clinic here this evening. Again, let's look at Charles White. Go to the end zone, and his forward momentum, he'll take to the air again. And Barry Wilburn plays it as good as he can. You see Neil Okowitz for the first hit. Wilburn hits him, but Charlie White stays alive and lands on a body, and in reality rolls into the end zone. He comes right over Okowitz, and it was a good thing he was airborne. He would have been hammered right there. He made the right move, and we talked earlier on a short yardage when maybe perhaps he should not have. And then let's take a look at Lansford. He's playing with a bad back. We knew that. And he just hooks it, whereas Sheik left it out to the right. Lansford hooks it. He's got a little bit of everything going in the kicking game tonight. Exactly the way I play golf. Yeah. <laughs> Take oh, your hand over uh, a little bit. A one to the right. A one to the right. <laughs> Loosen up the grip. <laughs> Charles White making the most of his 12 carries as he gets into the end zone. That's the fourth touchdown that White has scored this season on the ground. Dickerson only scored one while he was a Ram this year. Kick taken at the five-yard line by Keith Griffin. 20, 30, marker down. And he's dropped at the 34-yard line. Flags everywhere. This one will definitely come back. Dick Jorgensen in consultation with umpire Ron Botchen. And it will go against Washington. Illegal use of the hands. You almost need your best athletes on special teams Illegal these days. Block, number 51, receiving team, 10 yards, first down. Monty Coleman gets a penalty. I was saying you almost need your best athletes on special teams nowadays not to make plays so much, but to stay out of trouble. It's almost impossible not to make an illegal move on a kick return, Frank. Let's watch Monty Coleman again, and it's been a specialty of the Redskins for so long. You can see it right there, right in the back of the Norwood van, but the Redskins have always prided themselves in the special teams, and they've made some glaring errors tonight, and many during the past two games. First and 10 from the 13, and the pass is caught by Clark, and he takes the football out to the 30-yard line, or close to it. He is stopped there by Jerry Gray for a first down with 3.42 to play in the half. You know they have worked on that over the course of the week. That Rams will always show you the zone. Almost invariably, they'll be in the zone. And that time, that play to Clark was so quick, was timed out beautifully with Williams right between the two zone men on the outside. First and 10 at the 29. Underneath to Monk, who makes a nice catch on a pass behind him at the 33-yard line for a minimal gain, a gain of four. Second down and six. Keep in mind, too, Washington has spent one of its timeouts. They did that in the first quarter. They have two remaining. Three minutes to go in the half. 
Williams, the man of the moment, and Schrader, the man of the past, and you would imagine the future. But just a spectator, presently. Williams throwing, and the catch is made by Clark from his knees, and he takes it out to the 44-yard line. Hey, and, and, what, hey, and Al, what a great piece of hustle that time by Gary Clark. Down on his knees, the easy thing would have been to wait for Jerry Gray to come up and get him, and I think that's what the Rams are saying. And he goes to his knees right there so he can handle it. He's not reaching down for the football. He's down there to make sure he gets it, scoops it in. Ruling this incomplete pass. And they're going to rule it incomplete. That's kind of textbook for you, too, if you're an outside receiver, if you're watching this, because rather than bending over where you invariably will drop it, Gary Clark went down to try to scoop it up. Well, they ruled it an incomplete pass. That means the ball hit the ground. Let's yes. take a look at it. The ball is low, and there he goes to his knees. Well, we can't tell from that angle. It looks like a catch from behind. It brings it back to the 33, and it makes it third down, third and five. Two and a half to go in the half. Williams, complete, hits Monk, and Monk off to the races inside the 30, the 20, Art Monk is inside the 10 to the 6. A lot of people didn't think Art Monk had that kind of speed. But he's the motion man. Look at Art come in motion, go between two of his own re receivers, Diddy, and then just sit for the ball. And Frank, this surprises people as Gray overplays it. Good concentration by Monk. Looked it into his hands. He had dropped a couple already tonight. And this one, he looked all the way in. But Monk was a part-time running back at Syracuse where he broke a lot of records as a receiver. But he was a good running back there, too. And once he gets his hands on the football, He's a threat to take it all the way. I don't think Johnny Johnson thought that Art could outrun him as easily as he did. But overplayed by Gray, and that was the key. 61-yard gain, first and goal, and Rodgers pulls down to the one and a half. Newsom, who saved the touchdown, makes the tackle here along with Doug Reed. And that'll take us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to go in the half. RFK Stadium, Rams by 14. RFK Stadium in Washington. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deerdorf watching the Rams on top, 23 to 9, but Washington knocking at the door. Second down and goal for Shermer, the Rams defensive coordinator, watching his team trying to hold off the Redskins. Rogers powers his way to the one, setting up third down and goal. Greg Meisner in the middle, number 69 making the stop. If the Redskins ultimately get in the end zone, not getting in on that particular play is not that big a deal. They don't mind running a little time off of the clock. It's going to minimize the Rams and their time available when they get possession. But I don't think Joe Gibbs wants to flirt with it here. <laughs> Lining up right in front of Rodgers is Carvello. He used to be a nose tackle with Atlanta. A third and goal. Rodgers doesn't get it. Williams keeps and is in for the touchdown as the Rams bit and Williams rolls for the score. Oh, what a good call. And they made it look so good. And that is a play right out of John McKay's playbook. How many times did we see Doug Williams in an orange jersey playing for Tampa Bay on that same start of a play down on the goal line? That's Carvello, the lead block. Cromwell bought it all the way, number 21. He would have had the outside contain. 
And he looked at Carvello, saw Carvello, the smoke coming out of his nostrils, but Rogers following him, he bought it all the way. When you're Nolan Cromwell, number 21 on that outside, one thing and only one thing matters. You can't let anybody get outside you. And this time, Haji Sheik's kick is perfect. And the Redskins sanctioned good measure to that pass to Monk and the overplay on the play by Jerry Gray, resulting in a long game. March down to score and make it 23-16 with a minute and 15 to play in the half. And keep in mind, the two missed extra points, one each. And two missed extra points with a difference in last week's game, 31-29, Denver over Chicago. Yeah, well, the difference in that now is that they were both by the same team. <laughs> The Bears missed two extra points. These two have canceled each other out. If both of them are good, it's just a 24-17 game rather than 23-16. Big difference. Wild happenings on special teams here tonight, too. Kickoff return for a touchdown. We got a black punt. A little bit of everything. Kickoff returns right there. Ollie Matson and Travis Williams, who share the mark with Gail Sayers at six. Matson and Williams spent parts of their career with the, the Rams and Bobby Mitchell. Abe Woodson once ran one back 106 yards for the 49ers against Los Angeles. And Brown tonight doing it with four now in his career. Three and 85 and there he is. And this time they kick it short and it's taken up at the 19 yard line by Mike McDonald. And he brings it back to the 30 and we've got a scuffle. Norwood Van is one of the players. He's the Ram involved. We don't see Julio Cesar Chavez out there. Neither did Edwin Rosario the other night. I think Raven Caldwell might have been the Redskin who was going cheek to cheek with Norwood there. Keep in mind, it's normally not he who strikes first, but he who strikes second. They always see the second left. The one who retaliates. It's the counterpuncher who always gets it. Personal foul, 51, receiving team for slugging. 15 <laughs> yards, first and 10. I think he got a couple good body shots in before he decided to go to the head, did Norwood Van. We're going to pick this thing up right here, off to the left of the screen. We'll wait for the combatants to emerge from the pile. There's Norwood. Nice body shot. Ooh, a good uppercut and into the head. Yeah, he's lucky he's still in this ball game. Get our man Alex Wallow to do the commentary on that one. Man, he's lucky he has all his fingers intact also. I think it's Steve Gage, number 48, that he's pummeling. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. And it's Charles White taking it out to the 20. Rams have all of their timeouts remaining here in the half. And that penalty is against L.A. And we got another little skirmish. Skins have beaten the Rams five consecutive times. The the last time in the playoffs, 19 to 7. Well, you know the last interesting year. Now the interesting thing here is if you're the Redskins, now you've got to look at getting the ball back. Skins still have two of their timeouts left. Holding number 67, offense, and for this is going to go line. Still first up. Duval Love with a love tap. I think the Rams will think right with them too, Dan. They'll Certainly keep this on the ground, working on the clock, and Joe Gibbs trying to figure out if he can use those two timeouts and take them here, or let he hang around and wait for perhaps a turnover. Half the distance makes it first and 17 from the seven. And Gulman takes it to the 11. Now, what do the Redskins want to do? The Rams would probably like to run the clock out, and Washington will take a timeout, even though it's only first half. Well, the problem here is that they're going to be one timeout short because yeah. of that timeout they took early on. They can only stop the clock once more. What the Rams have to keep from doing right now is, is, is committing some sort of a penalty because the penalty would stop the clock. Mm -hmm. 
and every time they call that play in the huddle, they will be a subtle reminder, it won't be too subtle, let's hang on to this thing because they will be tackling the football. And the Redskins are one of the best around at doing that. All the Rams have to do right now is they run a play. They're looking at the clock and thinking about how much time is left. If they run one play here, a running play, and the clock goes down to about 50, then Washington can take its last time out. The Rams have a third down. Then they run one more play and let as much time go off the clock as they possibly can and hope to end the half that way. Coming up at the half, Gail Sayers is here. Frank will visit with him. And then Steve Largent will be with us live from Seattle. And we'll talk about the Seahawks and their big win yesterday over San Diego. Second and 13 at the 11-yard line. Gulman. Loose ball at the 10, but he's down. He's down. No fumble. They'll strip it out of there every time. As soon as they stop the runner, the next man is going to rip that ball. And now Washington takes another timeout. So now it's going to be third down and long. And Robinson has to think about the strategy here. Remember, the clock, of course, doesn't start until the snap. So if the play takes about four seconds and they get it to 45 and then a couple of seconds before signal's ready for play, they're still going to have a little bit of time left on the clock. You see very clearly there was no fumble. Gooman, who very wisely, he has both arms covering that football seam, squeezing it, and he is down before it comes out of there. A couple of scenarios can develop here. If the, if the Redskins force the Rams into kicking, you always have the, the possibility of the block. The other thing you've got is the possibility, since the clock would almost be down to zero, of a, of a punt and a fair catch. Because if you make a fair catch, you then get a free kick for a possible field goal. And the NFL hasn't seen that play in quite some time. It's one of the older rules in the book. And they have a man named Steve Cox of the Redskins who can kick it about 60 yards. Mm -hmm. And without any pressure, in this particular case, if they call for a fair catch. Third and 14. Gulman goes up the middle. Now he's short of the first down, and the Rams will just take as much time off the clock as they can. The 30-second clock has still not started, and that's a good break for the Rams, and now it's ready for play, which means if the Rams let it run all the way down, there'll be about five seconds, or six seconds, as you can see, remaining. Uh, you can bet the Redskins will forget the return on it. They're going to go and try and block it. And, of course, I'm sure that's the conversation that Johnny Robinson just had on the sidelines with his kicking unit. The Rams have an interesting choice here because if they take a delay penalty, which apparently they're going to do, and they do, that means that he's going to be five yards further back is Hatcher. Now he's going to have to kick... And if the kick comes, let's say, to the, the 45 or, or the 50, it's going to be that much closer. And, of course, uh, what he's got to be thinking about here now is kicking the ball out of bounds. I think my choice would have been to go ahead and snap the football at about one or two seconds yeah. left on the 30-second clock and not be so quick to give up five yards. Right. Five seconds now left in the half. And you see, that's, that's where an early timeout, the one Williams had to call in the first quarter, really comes back to hurt you. No time for a shank here. Remember, if a fair catch is called for, then a free kick, even if it extends the period, you get the free kick. He gets the kick away. It's a line drive kick, and there's no opportunity for a fair catch, and there's no opportunity for anything. Dead at the 49 and dead on the scoreboard clock. And so that's the end of a good first half, an interesting one in Washington. Rams ahead by seven and will return to RFK Stadium after this message from the NFL and a word from your local station. And this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Miller High Life. Miller made the American way since 1855. By Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. And by Epsom America. When you've got an Epsom, you've got a lot of company. And here are the numbers for the first 30 minutes. Funny numbers. Keep in mind, all that has really mattered in this game so far has been mistakes. The majority of them on the special teams, blocked punts, 
missed extra points, kickoff returns for touchdowns, and that yardage for Los Angeles is very deceiving because they've been the beneficiary of better special teams play. Meanwhile, on the far sideline, Jim Everett has been warming up for the Rams, and while Steve Dills had to close out the second quarter, it looks like Jim Everett is going to come back and start in the third quarter, and this is a play where he was injured. A good 50, look. Yeah, Rich Mallott, 57 there. Rich Mallott hits the ground, crawls in, and you see the contact on the left knee of Jim Everett. They called it a bruised knee. He had the knee braced on, and he's up running around. I saw him plan on it. Run, stop, throw. He's going to open up the second half for the Rams. That did look a little better that way. He took a shot from the helmet. A little closer shot there, and you could see that he did roll with it. Williams with 177 yards, and keep in mind that a couple of those passes would have gone for good yardage, but they were dropped. Art Monk in particular, who came back with the long run and the catch, dropped two in the first half. So Doug Williams would easily, I think, have had a first half in excess of 200 yards. Washington to kick off now. Ali Hajishi puts it in the air, and the third quarter is underway. Taken at the seven-yard line by Brown. And Brown comes out to about the 22. And here comes Jim Everett back into the game. Not even the trace of a limp, so he should be perfectly all right. Jim Everett, it's funny with what's going on with Jay Schrader in Washington. Schrader is the savior. He comes in with the injury to Theismann, and then he's going through his little swell period. Everett broke in with a bang last year with the Rams. But he's been struggling at this point, but still has his job. At the 25-yard line, it's Charles White stopped behind the line of scrimmage by Mel Kaufman. Rams, first quarter, it was Wiltshire picking up the fumble by Doug Williams, and then Ron Brown with that 95-yard kickoff return, and the blocked punt, which put the ball at the two-yard line, leading to the Charlie White TD, the block by Cromwell, his second in two weeks. And that's why the Rams have the lead. Yeah, the Rams have three touchdowns so far in this game, and offensively, they've moved a yard and a half to score those three touchdowns. Second and 11 from the 24. Everett to Gulman. And a marker is down as Gulman goes down at the 30. I think they're going to get somebody over on the left side holding Dexter Manley. They have really been concentrating on Manley. Well, they should. Against the Rams for a personal foul. John Robinson closing out his fifth year. Personal foul, leg whip. Number 66, offense, half the distance to the goal line, still second down. Tom Newberry. And he was he was working against Daryl Grant, and Daryl Grant made a move to the outside, and as Newberry went to the ground, he took a page out of Conrad Dobler's playbook and went to the leg whip. <laughs> <laughs> it must be that 66. There must be <laughs> page three, article four. <laughs> must be something in the number. <laughs> Second and 23 at the 12. Draw up, and all that does is draw a crowd. Charles Mann stops White. Manley gets the publicity, but Mann really does a great job. Hard to run a draw when you haven't sold the pass. Absolutely and the right. Not sold it at all. Jim Everett, I want you to watch Dexter Manley. See him to the right to the screen. Did you see how he starts before everyone else? I will guarantee you that Jim Everett is going on the same snap count 90% of the time. Dexter's got it, and he's getting a great jump on the ball. Young quarterback, get hung up on it. There he, there he is. Sure, great start there, and White gets taken down by Manley. Even though he ran past Manley, Manley was able to grab his leg and make the tackle. It is so common for a young quarterback to get locked in. Look at that start by Dexter. But look at this physical reaction to get back in and make the play. It's either that or he's reading the knuckles of Irv Pankey. Because he is jumping every one of them. Well, he can't be he can't be reading Pankey because he's moving long before Pankey is. Dale Hatcher, a floating short kick, and Marker is down, and the ball rolls back toward Ram territory at the 34-yard line. 
Yarber and Bowles colliding on the play. And there is Yarber. And we'll see about the penalty. goes against Washington and a big break for the Rams after a very poor kick. A huge break as that ball came all the way back almost to their own 30 yard line. 19 yard punt. Holding number 46 on the receiving team while the ball was in the air. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Dennis Woodbury. Oh, that's even bigger. From the spot of the foul, that is very big because it's a 10-yard penalty, but it's really a lot more after that bounce. Mm -hmm. Boy, did Eric Yarber get hit as he was looking up at the football all the way. And Bowles, who was coming back, trying to make a block, just steamrolled him, and Yarber never saw it. Redskins, isn't that funny that the Raiders would lead the league in yards per carry with a 3-7 and seven mark, but you've got Allen and Jackson. And then tonight, Washington, so proficient on the ground this season, relatively speaking, but next to nothing against the Rams. Meanwhile, they're looking upstairs. Replay official Cal Lepore is involved in this one, and I think it's for the spot. They want to see where the spot was. <laughs> there is the replay booth. X-ray replay tonight. <laughs> Dental x-rays. You can see the umpire speaking into his microphone. It's attached around his collar but the flag is still on the field down around the 42 mm -hmm. of Los Angeles none of the officials have yet picked up the flag which means that whatever they're talking about is still in dispute they're looking to mark the ball you could tell early on when Jorgensen started pointing toward the ground here's the play watch you ever get whacked by his own man Bowles We're checking where the ball was recovered. The spot of the foul was the 25-yard line. We'll go from the recovery once we find out where that was. Huh. Well, that will change it. Okay. I can understand what they're trying to do. If I'm to find fault with the system, why did he take a couple of minutes to explain it to the crowd? I mean, I think the crowd was wondering what's going on here in the ballpark. Okay, if that's what's going on, let us know about it as soon as you possibly can. That's all. Well, Washington figures to benefit from this. Possession foul, which was holding while the ball was in the air. We go from the spot that takes the offended team the farthest back. The end of the run was a 34. We'll go 10 yards from there. It'll be a first down. A first down at the Rams' 44-yard line is what it amounts to. If you're Washington, it was worth the wait. Well, wait a second. They're, they're saying the 34, and they're putting it at the 46. They'll work it out. Well, here it goes. Now, now they've got it right. Got a math major in there. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I think it's better to just put it down and play. <laughs> <laughs> Often, which we finally are. Redskins at the 44 of L.A., 12.53 to go third period. Rams lead 23-16. Rodgers. Again, Rodgers had that groin pull last week. We've seen him look a lot better, and that's one of the reasons their rushing average tonight is 1.4. He's running tentatively. By the way, for those of you that saw three Redskins in motion at the same time and are saying to yourself, wait a minute, that's not legal. I thought only one person could be in motion at one time. That's at the snap of the football. You can have three or four people moving all around. It's just they have to be settled down and only one person can be moving at the time the ball snaps. Second and ten, Kelvin Bryant is spelling Rogers. 
Second and long, and it's batted in the air, and it is caught at the 46-yard line by Bryant. No, now they say no. It bounced. Incomplete. Which is about the same as if it had been caught. Back to the line of scrimmage. Doug Reed breaking the play up. Second time, Reed has got a hand on one of the passes by Williams. Gets the penetration. Reed with Williams. Puts those big hands up. And the deflection. Now, was it a catch? They ruled it not. How, how close was it? Not close at all. Kelvin Bryant. The ball hits the ground. Third and ten from the 44. Williams, a bullet over the middle, and at the 28-yard line, if it's a catch, it's also a fumble, and what are they saying? No catch. Incomplete. <laughs> Gary Clark couldn't hold it. And Doug Williams is doing all he can do. This is a beautiful pass, and as Al said, a bullet. Nothing fancy by Clark, working against Jerry Gray. Comes back. Boy, that's just a perfectly thrown pass, and he never does have possession. You can see the ball on its way out right there. He's got good numbers tonight, and it'd be so much better had his receivers been holding on. Joe Gibbs saying during the week that Clark had not dropped a pass all year. Cox to kick. Rams set up a return this time as they sent two men back let it bounce and if the skins can down it and they do the rams are very deep in their own territory natural turf will do it every time down to the two by steve gave from there the rams begin 11 40 to go in the third rams take over at their own two yard line first and ten with 11 40 to go in the third quarter Steve Hurd, of course, dug out a little information for us today. The Rams have started with the longest field, and that means they have started with the worst field possession of any team in the league this season. Uh, they haven't improved on that tonight. You know, and Al touched on something interesting, talking about all the attention being paid to Jay Schrader. In reality, if you look at Jim Everett, he has worse numbers than Schrader. But because of, in reality, no one behind him, he's retained his job. He's coming into tonight has only four touchdown passes and has thrown nine interceptions. That's a horrendous ratio. First and ten, Los Angeles at its own two-yard line. And White gets out of the end zone with a flag thrown as well as he takes it to the four. And if that hold is in the end zone, if that's a penalty on the Rams in the end zone, that could be a safety. It could be a two-pointer. That's what the Redskins are contending, holding. Where was it? Yeah. That's the key. If it's outside the end zone. On a running play, you would suspect, though, it would be at the line of scrimmage. Holding, number 56, offense, decline, second down. Center Doug Smith, they take the play. And that hold was real close to being in the end zone. They take the play, which was a two-yard gain, to make the Rams use the down, second and eight. I think it's second and nine from the three. Everett nearly had it picked off. Barry Wilburn, who has picked off a pass in each of the last six games, almost had his seventh in a row. Tough, you have a young quarterback, and you really don't have the confidence to let him throw the ball. If you're going to let him throw the ball down, you let him throw on first down. Don't get him in a situation like this. Overthrows and then Wilburn does almost come down with it. Now you got him in a third and long situation. The Redskins, every time they've had this before in Ram territory, have looked at a draw, and it's not a very good call at this moment. Rams are one for seven on third down. And it's White. And White gets banged down at about the 11-yard line. And if they spot it right there, and they do, he is short of the first down. But he does give Hatcher some breathing room on the punt and the Rams are now one out of eight on third down opportunities fine effort by Charlie White it makes a big difference if nothing else psychologically for a punter get out from under his own goal post and the Rams dodged a bullet as well by not getting a safety called on the hold on Doug Smith Yarber 
who was run into by Bowles and shaken up about five minutes ago will field this punt from Hatcher. And they left early on the punt. The Rams left early. And there's a flag down. And it comes back to the LA 48 on the run back. Tim Terrell in on the tech. Oh, that's going to negate a terrific punt. And also, good coverage on the team covering it. They had good coverage on that. And the Redskins, of course, have the option. Do they want the ball at the Rams 49, or do they want the Rams to kick again? And so it's Terry Orr, the special team's captain, looking over to the bench. And Jorgensen will back him up, and we'll do it again. That's about as far as Hatcher is going to kick it. Better believe they're going to take it again. And that's just about everything Hatcher has. He turned it over, got a good foot into it. Redskins want to see if he can do it again. Well, the Rams backed up deep in their own territory last week. If you missed it, the Rams to beat St. Louis held the ball for the last 11 minutes of the game and drove for a field goal from their own three to the Cardinal three. 23 plays. But this time, three and out, and Hatcher to kick from the end zone. And this is another good kick. And it's fielded at the 44 by Yarber. And Yarber brings it down to the 47, so it's just about where he would have been anyway. 10-14 to play. Third quarter, Los Angeles on top by a touchdown. RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. On a, not a bad night for the 23rd of November. You never know what you're going to get. Two, two nights ago, it would have been brutal here. About 40 degrees. Jay Schrader has been on the bench the entire night. Doug Williams leading the skins at the Ram 47 first and 10. L.A. ahead by seven. Inside the 40, and Kelvin is rolled down at the 27-yard line. A good job of bursting through the hole that time by Kelvin Bryant. A very decisive run. Follows Donnie Warren, his tight end, who makes the good lead block, and then no hesitation. Oh, and here he picks up a block by Art Monk. It allows him to get down the sidelines, and on the first down play, it's Kelvin Bryant in the single back rather than George Rogers. And we mentioned before, Rogers running gingerly tonight and not having a big night with a full groin, and he's on the bench. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. Bryant again. And Kelvin for a gain of close to seven. Another big block by Joe Caravella. He was a player they picked up from Atlanta as a replacement player, number 88. And he had a block a moment ago on Bryant's sprint to the left side. He got another big block on the right side against Mel Owens. And the little nose tackle has turned into a bit of a tight end or a move back or whatever you want to call him, Dan, is very effective. A good look at him there, and Frank calls him the little nose tackle. He's your average size tight end. He's only 6'3", 271. <laughs> He's been awesome tonight. A stout last. Second and four. <laughs> Bryant. Caravello does his job on the play with a nice block into the 13 for a first down. And Don Warren laid a beauty out to pave it to Bryant. And Caravello sealed off the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at him right on the line of scrimmage. He's going to have to pin the defense back to the inside. Okay, there he's working against Mike Wilcher. He got the left arm out there a little bit, a little jersey. Well, you can tell he spent some time in the offensive meeting rooms learning how to do it. Three major efforts on the part of Caravello. And the skins are on the move and on the ground. And they've been unable to do that all night long. And Joe Gibbs loves that guy. First and ten from the 12. Bryant and wrapped up from behind Reggie Doss. Rode him down. 71. Second and nine. Joe Gibbs was telling me yesterday about Caravella the first time he ran a pass pattern during practice. He's got good speed. He's about a 4.75 or 4.8 runner in the 40. And as we get a good look, here's R.C. Thielman coming off the field. Limping and the Redskins are already light in the offensive line are now sending Jeff Bostick 
into play. The former Pro Bowl center is in the lineup as Thielman comes out. And they're next to out of people for that offensive line. Mm -hmm. Graham, of course, is injured. Simmons is injured. Rams have been very porous. As you can see, once the opponent gets inside the 20. And Washington's been proficient inside the opposition 20. On second and 10, Williams throwing low, no, incomplete, incomplete. Sanders was sure he had it and spikes the ball at the official's feet. And that is, I think, worthy of another look. <laughs> oh, Williams thought he had it also. That is very, very close. Let's take a look. Ricky Sanders just working to the outside. Flips, goes to the ground, works his way back. Just what a receiver has to do. Keeps coming to the ball. We're not going to see it much better than this. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, that uh, looks like a catch to me. Uh, he's got to control no, that. No, 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 I don't agree with that. Well, it looks like he had his hand. Looks like his hand. It depends if his hand was under the ball. Very, very close. One more time. A good coverage on the part of Rams that the Rams, as we look again, I think it did not have control of it. I think no. the ruling was right, but good coverage on the pass. And the Rams have been tough down here with their coverage. Third down, a little less than 10 at the 12-yard line. And the pass is batted away by Gray. Oh, he's made some great plays tonight, Jerry yeah. Gray. And one bad one, though, when he overplayed the catch and run by Monk. Good defense here. Strong. You see Williams looking left, looking right, finally has to get rid of it. He does about as good as you can expect from any quarterback. And it was just a, a fine defensive play by Jerry Gray. And the rest of the Rams secondary, because Williams did not want to go there first. Gaudy numbers by Haji Sheik inside the 29-yard line. Hmm. A perfect 25 for 25 over the course of his career. And this one is from 29 yards out. And in another one. 26 for 26 is Ali Haji Sheik out of the University of Michigan. Hail to the victors. He's getting him a little closer, isn't he? By Only four. Really? By four. I suspect you know, sir, your alma mater is going to the Rose Bowl. Indeed. And you, <laughs> sir, what happened to the Wolverines this week? I think it's the Hall of Fame Bowl. Ah, wanted to give Earl Bruce a nice send-off. Yeah, he got one all right <laughs> by a 23 to 20 margin. Oh, well, you're what? You're next Saturday? Hey, what a game for Rodney Pete. Let's put, you know, let's, oh, yeah. you let's talk get about USC again, again, huh? <laughs> right now we'll talk about the Rams and the Redskins as Washington kicks off down to the six-yard line and Brown out to the 35-yard line. He is tackled there by Daryl Green. And so the Rams, who now lead by four, bring the offense out with 6.52 remaining in the third period. Football game that really has had a little bit of everything. We lost this man early in the game. We thought we were going to lose him for a long time. He came back with nothing but a bruise knee. We've had kickoff returns for touchdowns. We've had block kicks. Just a little bit of everything in a hard-hitting game. First and ten at the 35-yard line. White, big hole to the 45, close to a first down. And he spotted just inside the 45 and close enough to measure. First man seldom ever gets him, and he comes through the line of scrimmage. He has that quick cut and accelerates off it just about as good as you're going to find. He'll make that first man miss almost every time. And you'd think the Redskins would be a little more attentive to White between the tackles where he's getting his yardage and where he gets virtually all of his yardage. I mean, he just doesn't turn the corner anymore with any real decisiveness or with that burst of speed. You'd think the Redskins would be putting a safety up there between the tackles as we see that Charles White has now passed Derek Dickerson and resumed his former lead as the NFL's leading rusher. Goldman. Across midfield to the 47, there's a qualifier to White, though he did play through the strike. Dickerson didn't. So some extra games there for Charles, but nonetheless, a big, big year for him. 
And as we said before, a guy who's battled all kinds of adversity, and he's lived a life and a half. He has a wife and five children. But then again, he did not play much in those first two games when Eric Dickerson played. Mm -hmm. The legitimate numbers he has up there. Guess that's one kid for every year in Cleveland, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cold there. The Make what you want of that. <laughs> to the 44-yard line. And a first down for White. Food for thought. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Say it again, he's come through his own personal hell with his drug problems and is going to battle it the rest of his life and he'll be the first one to tell you about it. He knows it. Getting a second opportunity and he's making the most of it. First and ten, Los Angeles at the Washington 44. Everett for Brown, he's out in front and he drops it. How could he? I think he got stripped. I think we're going to get a good look at maybe Ron Brown. He either had the ball and should have caught it, or it might have been Barry Wilburn getting a right hand on Brown's right arm. Clearly, you can see Brown. He'll make his break to the inside. Now let's watch Wilburn. Good recovery by Wilburn. He was turned completely around. No strip. Nope. He just didn't handle it. Mm -hmm. He just dropped it clean. Mm -hmm. Good move by Brown to turn Wilburn around and a perfectly thrown football. And, and for the Rams, an all too common team. Brown has great speed, but you need the hands to go with him. Simone Johnson deflects tight end on this play, takes it to the 38-yard line, and the Rams will have a third and about four upcoming. And now, Ron Brown comes back into the game. Isn't that odd? If the two have played a dozen games together, you would figure with Everett's arm and Brown's speed somewhere, somehow, they'd have linked up for a touchdown. No. He may never have one easier than that. Oh. And the other wide receiver, Ellard, at the bottom of the screen with his great speed, he hasn't caught a touchdown pass all season. Third and four. Everett Chase lofts it up. Incomplete, and a marker is down. A flag is down on the secondary. That's Charlie Mann that was in Jim Everett's face. But look at this, going to work against Washington. Kaufman. Number 55, defense, five yards, first down. Kaufman was holding Gulman. The guy who was let off the hook was Jackie Slater, but this is Kaufman right here. Kuhlman's going to come out of the backfield. Let's see if we can pick up the hold. There's Gooman. There's the contact. Oh, yeah, look at the right arm all the way over the shoulder pad. Good call there. First and 10 at the 33-yard line. White takes it down to the 21-yard line and a first down and the Rams with their most impressive march of the night and if you're joining us late and you're wondering how they have 23 points you can thank the defense and you can thank the special teams and you can thank Jackie Slater the lead block on this and Dennis Hare playing with a bad back he closes down Slater with a good block to the outside big opening for Charlie White about the best he's had on the night Trophy winner, 79. George Rogers won it in 80. 22, it's white again. No blocking and no nothing. And I think that's a good look at Charlie White, who once he gets out the, outside the realm of tackle the tight end, then it's a little bit tougher for him to make something happen out there, Frank. Yeah, I think you'd need a big S on your chest to have made something happen with that one. That was just good defensive play. They strung that out beautifully. Yeah, but Absolutely. he is not the man who take, he's not the man to take it outside. He has that when he does, he cuts it back inside and goes against the grain, and that's where he picks up the big yardage. Second and 14 at the 26. For Brown makes the catch. Touchdown. That's the hard one. <laughs> Ron Brown. Yes, you can come home again. <laughs> you better. <laughs> Not often.
often you see two touchdowns on the same drive to the same guy. They went back to it. This time they did not have man-for-man -man coverage. They had some kind of a combination, either a zone or some a key combination. And Everett was right there. There's Wilburn, and he had help on the inside. It got there too late with too little. for the extra point. And that's good. And it was real close as to whether or not he crossed the plane. But Brown, who ran a kickback for a touchdown, runs this one back. Or makes the catch, and they say he gets in. A perfect throw by Jim Everett. Ron Brown doesn't have to do much again. Is he in the end zone? I think the plane of the ball broke the goal line, or at least, gentlemen, close enough to count. We're getting very picky. The L.A. Rams on top by 11. 30 to 19. Somebody better tell this dude. <laughs> Brown. Oh, yeah. Tom, you can't believe it. You should have seen that catch I made. At the two-yard line, Griffin. Now to about the 19 amidst the pushing and shoving. And so Washington down by 11, starting deep in its own territory with three minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. really could not move that ball in the first half. They started moving that ball awfully well on the ground. It makes the pass so much easier when you have to start respecting the fact that they can run the football. And Charlie White was ripping off big chunks of yardage, and all of a sudden it becomes much easier to throw the football. First and ten, Redskins from the 20-yard line. Williams for Clark. It's almost intercepted. Leroy Irvin. And that's not a very good read by Doug Williams. That's a ball that he really shouldn't have let go because Gary Clark was never open on the play. They tried to line him up at tight end to hide him. You notice he was snuggled in there next to Joe Jacoby, but all the way, Leroy Irvin has the coverage on this. Gary Clark has no chance at a play on the ball. And that's, mm. that's just a pass that he never should have thrown as Johnson comes on in. I mean, Newsom, rather, comes in at the same time. Second and 10 from the 20. Williams is 0 for 5 in this half. One for six now as Bryant makes the catch and scrambles out to the 26-yard line, and that will set up a third down and four. Kelvin Bryant. Meanwhile, Ernie Zampezi, who came over from San Diego to run the offense and install a new offense, talks to his charges. That's charges minus the, the R. The second one. Third and four. Bryant can't hold it. Would have been a first had he been able to hold it. Oh, and a late flag comes yeah. in late. Very late. And that pass appeared to be thrown back behind Kelvin Bryant. But a crucial mistake by Los Angeles with a personal foul. It was thrown right at the feet of Kevin Green and thrown after the ball was dead. The whistle was blown. Number 91, defense after the ball was dead. 15 yards, first down. Green. And that would turn John Robinson green. <laughs> no matter what they do to you, save it. Because in all likelihood, he was just retaliating. But if you're going to do it, let a play go by or something. And they always catch that second man. Earlier, Washington cashed in when the Rams ran into the kicker and turned it into a touchdown. Cash is made, and then the tackle is made on Art Monk. 
by Gray and Owen. Yet it's a pass that doesn't give Art Monk a lot of flexibility in doing something with it after he catches it. The ball was low. He had to go down for it. By the time he made the catch, really no opportunity to do much against the Rams who pursued and were already on top of it. Redskins going all the way now with Kelvin Bryant in there. Rogers not seeing much action. Bryant doesn't give you the run, but he gives you the pass out of the backfield. Second and five, and it's Bryant. Busting his way across the 50 for a first down, or what should be anyway, Owens and Green converge on a tackle. Great star in the USFL with the first the Philadelphia Stars, later to become the Baltimore Stars. What a versatile athlete he is. Terrific receiver out of the backfield, very heady. Reads defense as well. They tried to go to him on several occasions tonight, and he works very well against the Rams' type of defense, that being his own. First and 10 at the 48. for a first down. And there was nothing wrong with that throw. That toss from Doug Williams was just as pretty as it could be, right over the top. He's going to look at Clint all the way, who's just making a break to the sideline. And that is a nice touch on the ball. Dropped it right in over the top of Larry Kelm. And Doug Williams starting to get a little cooperation from his receivers. And a lot of effort from his offensive line. He had plenty of time. Didier had caught two passes all season coming in. That's his second pass tonight. First and ten skins at the 28. Bryant can't hold it. Even had he held it, Kevin Green was right there ready to bury him. 134 to go in the third. And that might be the easiest way to tell when a quarterback has had minimal work. It's not so much his touch on the long passes, it's his ability to deliver the short passes. And I think a good illustration there of Doug Williams, who really has had minimal work. Keep in mind that he's out during the strike as well. And this is really just a simple toss to Kelvin Bryant, and it just gets away from him. Second and ten. Month over the middle and the catch is made by Warren at the 22 yard line and that'll set up a third down in about five how's that for concentration and holding on to the football and he knew he was going to get it been doing that for a lot of years we talked earlier about the way the Rams will sit back in that zone defense if that's the case, your tight ends come into play. Notice the evening that Warren and Diddy are having. On this drive, they've been productive. Third and five at the 22-yard line. And Williams releases to Bryant for the first down inside the 10-yard line. Taken down by Newsom. He works great out of the backfield, and... Good play by Williams again, letting Bryant coming all the way around from the right, letting him clear the linebacker, and he's wide open. This is Kelvin Bryant lined up right here. It's just a simple thing out of the backfield and then all the way across the formation. But look how Doug Williams is choosing and mixing up his receivers. He's just locked up one-on-one. -on -one. That's Vince Newsom. Kelvin Bryant makes the move and comes clean. And Doug Williams alternating his receivers. One, two, three, four. On first and goal, Bryant, a three-yard gain down to the six, and that will end the period. So we will go to the fourth quarter with the Rams on top by 11. We'll be back after this word about an upcoming show on ABC and a word from your local station. Washington, D.C., Al Michaels, along with Frank Gifford and Dan Deardorff. Monday night football from the nation's capital with the Los Angeles Rams, 10-point underdogs, lead by 11, 30-19. And as we start period four, Washington has the ball. 
it is second and goal at the five. George Rogers is back in the game. Fake to Rogers, pass into the end zone, caught, touchdown, Art Monk. Uh, what a read by Williams. Not bad for artistic value. No, not bad, and what a throw by Williams, and he just has to put this in a perfect spot. A simple little break-in pattern by Art Monk, but Doug, what he did effectively is wait for the defense to move in front of the ball. Let's take a look at it. That's Didier in motion. That was Art Monk that just moved in front of our screen, but notice how Williams, with that great protection, waits for the Rams to collapse up towards the line, and Art Monk just wide open in the end zone. Ali Haji sheet with Jay Schrader holding. That makes it 30 to 26. Let's take a look at the touchdown catch by Art Monk. Here is Art right here. Now he's going to run a simple pattern here. But watch how the Ram defense drops back. But then when they all move up, Williams, who's rolled out, waits for them to clear and then makes the throw. Now there's Didier in motion. Now watch how the Ram defense collapses to the inside. There's the free safety, Johnny Johnson. They all move that way. Williams waits for Monk to clear and delivers an easy touchdown pass. And for Monk, who dropped a couple earlier, he gave him the credit. He kept on the move, and Williams stayed right with him until he uncovered. Art Monk with five catches. We mentioned before how odd it was Monk with such a fabulous career. Monk has caught 493 passes in his career, but for only 34 touchdowns. Daryl Turner of Seattle has caught 98 passes in his career for the same number of touchdowns. And it's nothing more than the role Art Monk fills for the Redskins. Brown at the 15-yard line and runs into his own blocker and a marker goes down with Damone Johnson, the man he ran into. You know, going back to Art Monk and his role with the Redskins, it's Gary Clark, the receiver that runs most of the long patterns, and before Monk, I mean before Clark rather, keep in mind that was Charlie Brown that was working on the other side of the field, the long, explosive type receiver. Multiple penalties there. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can put those signs to music. All right, Dick. What's shaking, babe? We have a multiple foul on the kicking team. Offsides, which is declined. Personal foul, illegal black below the waist, number 54, kicking team, 15 yards and a first down. Kurt Gouvet is number 54. Imagine a visitor to our land watching his first football game trying to figure out what that just was. <laughs> Imagine somebody who's followed the game for 15 years. <laughs> Looked like a man with a backache to me. <laughs> Lopsided numbers, they still remain. That skins on the heavy side of it. Still trailing the Rams. Meanwhile, Jorgensen explaining the call. Further explanation for Robinson. White is on the sideline at the moment. And Jorgensen wants to talk to us again. Offensive team, the Rams, has stick him on his hands. He is suspended at least one play until he gets his stick him off his hands. First off, there'll be wow. no stick him. Imagine this guy from another country now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean they can't use stick him? <laughs> Celester Hayes rule. Certainly is. And John Francis, a replacement player, will replace White at least for one play. From the 40-yard line, 
Schulman for a gain of two. And here comes Charles. Good question with the, how did they find out? That was not a high five you got. That was not a, that was a low 10 check. <laughs> Second and seven. 14-17 remaining in the fourth period. And White with those clean hands takes it out to the 48-yard line where it'll be third and two. Daryl Grant makes the tackle. I guess it's impossible for something like this to happen without getting that mental image of Lester Hayes with Stickham just dripping off his fingers. And oh. If you've ever been on the field with someone who's wearing Stickham, I mean, it is like, it's like garlic in a room. Once one person has it on, everyone has it within three or four plays. White on third and two tries to pick up the first down with a little slicing dive and may have it. And he does. Of course, it gets all over the football, and the quarterbacks hate it. And the guy who wears that stuff or uses it normally also chews tobacco as well. Again, Charlie White, very athletic. Three times now over the top and three times successful. At the 49-yard line, first and ten. White. Nice run by Charles, and he has a first down at the 36-yard line with 13.08 remaining. Maybe you don't need Eric Dickerson. 24 carries, 82 yards for Chas White. There is a lot of football still left in this guy. And I know we've touched base with his problems and whatnot, but his productivity is there regardless of the problems he's had on a football team. Regardless of your record, he's the guy that can start and play a lot of ball for you. At the 36, there he is again for a gain of about six to the 30-yard line. He is stopped by Darrell Grant. He's working behind a line now that includes Deval Love, who's in there for Dennis Harrow. We talked at the beginning of the game of the bad back that Dennis Hara was trying to play with, and he did start the game and go through the first portion of it, but... We all love a third-year man from UCLA who's in there now. That right guard. Charles White, 29 years old, putting on another good show. Second down and four at the 30-yard line, and they give it to Kuhlman, and he takes some of the load for two. It'll make it third down. You know, the Rams will have some interesting choices to make with all of their draft choices coming up and the high choices. If Charles White finishes with a flourish, it might mean the Rams will look elsewhere in the draft and not necessarily go after a running back, which they may have gone after had White not done the job. If you're in charge of the Rams draft, you have to be like a little kid in a candy store. Over the next couple of years, three number ones, three number twos, plus a couple of ball players, all for one guy, Eric Dickerson. But you got some pressure because the pass drafts have been so bad. Third and three, and it's caught by Gooman, who takes it to the 24-yard line. They picked up Mike Shad last year, and he hasn't played. Donald Evans this year, and he hasn't played as their two top guys. So there is a little bit of pressure on the Rams in terms of making the right choices in the draft. Everett there in a good read. He went to Gooman when he saw Monty Coleman get caught inside. Monty Coleman's a good pass-defending linebacker. He got way inside on that. Gooman was wide open and he gets the first down and keeps this drive alive. First and 10, LA at the 24. Rams lead by four. White, back of Gulman. Down to the 20 yard line. This is what Robinson loves now, especially late in the game and it was manifested perfectly last week against St. Louis. He loves to run at you, he loves to wear you down and what he's doing here with the lead is taking a lot of time off the clock as well. You know, Al, I want to shift gears for a moment and go back to the trade. You know, there's another aspect of the Dickerson trade, and John Robinson told me about it yesterday. He said, you know how much pressure this takes off of the shoulders of Jim Everett right now as far as not having to be instantly productive and produce a winner? White on second and six. Picks up a first down to the 13-yard line. It doesn't hurt to have a man to come in and is leading the league in rushing. 
Not an Eric Dickerson. He's sure he's well aware of that himself, but he is very productive, and they're getting a lot more out of him than I think that they even anticipated yeah. they would. And look at Robinson. This is his football. Yep. All the way back to SC. He loved it. Remember last week, I, I can't recall ever seeing a drive go 11 minutes with 23 plays. <laughs> Maybe look at him one. But that's what they did last week, and it resulted in a field goal to win the game. White now has 99 yards. On first down, Gulman gets pushed back. Grant leads the charge. Didn't hurt to have Charles White at SC. Marcus Allen. His favorite saying was they... Love to run with the football. I like to watch him run with the football. <laughs> Student body right. Second and ten. Rams at the 13. Nine and a half to go on the fourth. White gets bottled up. At the 11-yard line, he is stopped there by Charles Mann and Mel Kaufman coming up for support. Dan talked about earlier, and when you do not have the great confidence in your quarterback, which I'm sure they don't have in Jim Everett, even though they think he's going to be a great one, you get him in a position now where you almost have to throw the ball or run the draw play. And that's what they've been doing all night long. If you come out there, if you believe in him, you run the ball really well, establish the fact you can run, then on a first down, you pop that thing. Don't get yourself where you have to throw it. Brown and Ellard. Ellard's been silent to the left, and Damone Johnson flexes out to the right. And he's looking for Johnson in the end zone, and it's picked off by Alvin Walton. Uh, Alvin Walton, perfect coverage. He reads that all the way. Alvin Walton doesn't really look at the receiver, Brown. He's locked in on Jim Everett. All the way, he turns and runs, and then right back to the ball and makes a relatively easy play. Watch him do a 360 here, Frank, and go right back to the quarterback. Absolutely. A second rule for the pass. If, it, if he's not there, you know you're not going to have him throw the thing out of the end zone. You give up three points that way. How many times have you seen a defensive back in this position play the receiver and not the ball? Not Walton. Perfect. Alvin Walton. Quaffed by Mr. Phyllis. Or Kenneth in New York. I guess if the Boz can do it, so can Alvin Walton. <laughs> he made a super play. He had an interception in the wild card playoff game against L.A. last year. That's the Rams' first turnover of the night from the 20. Here come the skins on first and 10. Little screen over the middle to Kelvin Bryant, who picks up nine to the 29. Eight minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Bryant came in tonight as the leading receiver for the Redskins, and you can see why. They're throwing that, well, it's a high percentage pass. It's hard to pick off. You have your outside men. If they don't come open right away, you pop it to Bryant, pop it to him short, and then let him do the rest of the runner. Second and one at the 29. First down for Bryant to the 32-yard line, and a marker. Reggie Doss and <laughs> Carl Eckern in on the stop, and the Rams saying it's against Washington. Third, by Jorgensen. And Dick Jorgensen, the referee, throws his flag and hits Doug Williams right in the back. <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> I don't know who he was aiming at. Holding number 63, offense, still second down. Well, he was aiming at Raleigh McKenzie, the center. But he hit Doug Williams right in the back. Those things have little weights in them, too, you know. That's, uh, I don't want to minimize the trauma of getting hit with his flag. Boom, there it is. <laughs> you don't want to maximize it, either. <laughs> yeah, what the heck. <laughs> Second and 11. The guy could have been injured. He could have been hurt. <laughs> yeah. From the 19. <laughs> Williams shakes off a sack. And then throws incomplete, intended for Clark, but Cromwell was the free safety and back there covering. Williams was really being harassed back there, but he just kicking himself for not getting that completion, and it could have been a big one. Kevin Green was in there, Gary Jeter was in there. Look at his concentration. He went through all of this in five years at Tampa Bay when things were not too good to back there, and he somehow always seems to get the ball off. He seldom ever sacked Williams. But he held the concentration, had the man wide open, and he is really 
upset with himself for not getting that ball to Gary Clark. And he threw that ball about 45 yards in the air, and when he threw it, both his feet were off the ground. Third and 11 for Williams at 50%. Williams, good coverage in the secondary and the sack. Kevin Green, number 91, getting the sack. Nobody got open. And that's a sack that you credit to your secondary. I mean, that's just strictly a case of no one being open, the quarterback eating the ball, and a veteran play by Williams. You don't throw it up for grabs. You don't need a turnover at this point in the game. at the goal line. And it's a low kick, but it takes a good red skin bounce and bounces away from Hicks. And thus it turns out to be pretty good and will look real nice on the stat sheet for Cox. 46 yards. There's the man with the sack and we've got 7.01 to go in the fourth. And behind the Capitol, the Washington Monument on this cool and clear night at RFK Stadium in Washington where the Rams take over at their own 38-yard line. They lead by four, seven minutes to go on the fourth. And White takes it out to the 41-yard line. So again, the Rams figuring to stay on the ground and trying to eat up as much time as they can and punish the Redskins. Which is exactly what they did on their last drive. I mean, they brought the ball all the way down the field, and Everett made the mistake of throwing the ball into the end zone where Alvin Walton makes the play, but the Rams have been moving the ball on the ground, and you see why. Charlie White, over 100 yards on the ball game, and he shows no signs of slowing down. On second and seven, they call his number again, and he gets it out to the 47-yard line, and that's going to set up a third down and two for the Rams. And the clock keeps on ticking, and we're down now to six minutes and eight seconds. Back to all the great tailbacks from O.J. right on down, Charlie White, Marcus Allen, they seem to all get stronger the more carries you give them. They love to carry the football. Charles White is no exception. Third down and a long yard at the 47. And White gets bottled up. Marcus Cook, number 74, in on the tackle. The man who created it. There he is. And boy, was he in the... Rams backfield and just when we were talking about the Rams here in the fourth quarter putting together some time consuming consuming drives Cook comes up with the play and it looks like the Rams after some indecision are going to go ahead and punt the football. Well what Robinson wanted the official to do is start that clock started to wind his arms. Redskins did not even consider pass they had brought it their secondary they hit every gap there was there was no way in the world Charles White was going to get that particularly over the top. They totally disregarded that. Eric Yarber now. The Rams will take that 30-second clock right down to the nub, which they do. And Hatcher's kick is a low liner. Fielded at the 15-yard line. And Yarber begins to break it and takes it back out to the 27. So the Redskins and Williams, after the tackle by Kelm, start from the 27 with five minutes to play. Jay Schrader has handled it all very well this past week. Of course, he didn't like being put down. And he's handled it well. Bad game against Philadelphia a couple of weeks ago. Five for ten last week before they finally pulled him out. Tough decision for Joe Gibbs. But he has handled it very well. He, of course, is the Redskins Travelers Man of the Year. That, of course, nothing related particularly to football, but his activity within the community. And he will represent the Redskins in the Travelers Man of the Year with an ounce at the Super Bowl. 
Skins at the 27, and Williams has Didier open, and he makes the catch at the 50-yard line. Stopped by Johnny Johnson and a big 22-yard pickup. Mm. And that hurt. Never get over admiring somebody like a Didier. He'll turn his back to the defender, and he knows he's coming. It did hurt, too. Right in the kidneys, and Clint just lined up at tight end, just straight down the field and turned back for the football. And it's such a well-thrown ball that he never even breaks his forward momentum, and by turning back, protecting the football, exposes himself to that shot in the back and takes it and holds on. Make more catches tonight than he did all season coming in. He's caught three balls tonight, five for the year. First down at the 50. Swing out to Bryant. Escapes one tackle and then gets run out of bounds by Wilcher. At the 48, and that stops the clock with 4 9 remaining. Jack Kent Cook, the owner of the Redskins, would dearly love to own a baseball franchise, Jeff. Wouldn't he? Yeah. Every time you come into Washington, there are signs up, and there's one here tonight that says, how about Monday night baseball in D.C.? And he's not just idly passing the time up there. I sat with him during the Redskins practice yesterday, and he said, by the way, you know, that was Doug Williams' 14th completion in a row. This is during practice. He's paying that close of attention. Second and seven. And it's incomplete. No, he said, Dan, that was Doug Williams' 14th <laughs> completion in a row. Williams is complaining. Michael Stewart, in there defensively, just tackled Kelvin Bryant coming out of the backfield. And Williams is really upset. He wanted to get the ball to Bryant. And Michael Stewart came up and just tackled him. Williams showing a little emotion as he picks up the play from the sidelines. You'll see it up at the top of your screen. Bryant, top of your screen, coming around. Watch number 23. Just takes him right down. That's what Williams was complaining about. Third and seven at the 47. Blitz by Wilcher in the grass. That's a sack. That's a sack. Forget the rest of the play. This means nothing here. The play is over. Yeah. <laughs> Wilcher has already scored tonight. It was he who got the touchdown to make it 7-0. And a man who grew up in Washington, D.C., so quite a homecoming for Mike Wilcher. And this is a quick whistle. Look at the bottom of the screen. Mike Wilcher coming in on the blitz, untouched. It's tough to get Doug Williams down. Again, it's a two-part rule. It has to be in the grasp and in control of the defender. I guess we could call that a... He clearly was in the grasp. Whether he was under control is another story. They tend to blow up. It's that obvious that no way he can get away from it just for the protection of the quarterback. Well, no one in uh, Washington is complaining. Steve Cox. High kick. Not great distance. And fair caught at the 23-yard line by Clifford Hicks with 3.36 remaining in the fourth quarter. And we can tell you that coming up on ABC News Nightline, a hostage showdown in Louisiana and a massive riot in Georgia caused by Cuban detainees. How can their demands be met? That's tonight on Nightline, following your late local news. And then tomorrow night, after Who's the Boss and Growing Pains, a rock and roll tribute to the magazine that recorded music history as it happened. Dennis Hopper hosting Rolling Stone magazine's 20 years of rock and roll tomorrow. They got their right host. Yeah. At the 23, it's Charles White who gets tackled at the line of scrimmage by Olkowicz, and Washington's going to take a timeout. Now, this is a very interesting little call here with three and a half to play. They're going to take a timeout. Extremely interesting. And that's a planned timeout, and that was something that they knew they were going to do if they stopped them gain or next to no gain. I find it hard to question most anything Joe Gibbs decides well, to do. Yeah, except at this point, though, I mean, there's so much time left. I think, they're, I think they're firmly convinced that the Rams can't get the first down on them. But then if, if they, they get the ball back and they don't move and have to give it away again, they've got nothing left. And what they're doing here is they're trying to save the maximum time between plays. You can understand the philosophy. The only thing we're questioning is 
with three and a half to go. And a very strong belief that they can stop the Rams' offense. The Rams' offensive line has been doing a superb job considering Redskins and are really thinking, almost disregarding pass. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a curious call, too, after doing it on, on, on first down. On second down coming up, if you do it on third down, well, he's not. It. He's 91 seconds away from the two-minute warning. So... I think what Joe is saying is if I if I let the clock run down until the two-minute warning, what I've done, in essence, is really blow off a minute and a half of this ball game when you only have three and a half left. Well, the other thing, too, is if you use all your timeouts on defense, you're down by four. You might have to save one for the offense. Well, he hasn't used them all yet. We'll see. Second down and ten at the 23. And what he does, really, is force Everett to pass and he throws for a first down out at the 41 to Henry Ellard. So now it comes back to burn you. You've burned a timeout, and now the Rams start a new sequence. Had a good call. Second and long. We've seen the Rams time and time again. Keep it on the ground until they got a third down. That time they put it in the air, and Ellard was wide open. Yeah, he's just working man for man against Daryl Green. Relatively simple pattern and a gutsy call by the Rams. Of course, keep in mind, this is a Los Angeles team that has absolutely nothing to lose. Two and seven out of the playoff picture, playing the role of spoiler a lot easier. I don't think Bill Walsh is sweating at you. No, I don't think he's concerned. First and ten at the 41-yard line. White out to the 42. Now what do the Redskins want to do? They spent the time out before, they're and they're going to take another one here. They take their second right here, which means, you know, in effect, if the Rams pick up another first down on this drive, the Skins are in deep trouble. 2.38 to go. Philosophy must be, it doesn't matter when you save the time. Save the maximum, and as soon as he goes down, you, you take it. Well, in Joe Gibbs' scenario of how this was all going to work out, he didn't see Jim Everett throwing up field to Henry Ellard. But in a way, exactly though, right. He yeah. wasn't planning on that. In a way, though, he forced Everett to do that when he called that timeout. The Rams then said, okay, if we keep it on the ground, he's going to use another one. He almost forced the Rams to throw on second and ten there. You don't force John Robinson to throw. He well, doesn't like to he's throw. He's got to think about the strategy there. Oh, I know what you're, I know what you're oh, saying. Oh, it's been played out across the field. Second down and eight when play resumes at the 43-yard line. You know what Joe Gibbs is reading right there? He's reading a piece of paper that says this telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or any other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is strictly prohibited. <laughs> Second and eight at the 43-yard line, and it's White who gets taken down at the 44-yard line, and this means Washington will use another timeout. They are now out of timeouts. What comes upon us now for the Rams is a third down and seven, and the only time that Washington can now stop the clock for the balance of the game is at the two-minute warning in 33 seconds. Which, if they don't get... The first down will at least stop the clock before the change of possession. So I think it's the first for me. I've never <laughs> seen it. And I, I can get the theory and get the philosophy of it. You save the absolute maximum time. You have the one timeout remaining. That, of course, the two-minute timeout. But I've never seen it yeah. played out this way. I've never seen all of, all of the timeouts used in such fashion at this particular point. But what he's doing is he's gambling. It's as simple as that. He's saying we're going to stop him here and take our chances. The Rams, of course, have all their timeouts remaining should Washington somehow get the ball back and take the lead. Certainly going to put the pressure on Doug Williams. And, of course, on the play calling of Joe Gibbs. The Rams can pretty much end the game right here with a first down is what it amounts to. Third and seven at the 43. And what Joe Gibbs is talking about with Doug Williams is because of trailing by four points, field goal range is meaningless. They must score a touchdown. Ellard left, 
Brown right on third and seven. And they give it to White, and they stop him at the 45-yard line. And it's Manley and Bowles in on the tackle, and that will take us to the two-minute warning. So the Rams will be forced to kick with two minutes to play, and then Washington will get the ball back without a timeout, and a field goal would mean nothing for them. What's unfortunate for Washington is that the way it broke out, the two-minute warning isn't really saving you any more than seven or eight seconds yep. because the clock would have stopped on the change of mm -hmm. possession anyway. Mm -hmm. It really didn't work out well for Washington where the two-minute warning fell in the downs. Yep. And they got one, go and one first down back at the 25, the 27 was the one that upset the apple cart. And they'll have to go the length of the field without a T.O. Two minutes to go, and the uh, Los Angeles Rams will kick to the Washington Redskins. And Darryl Green is sent back to return the punt, the speediest of the skins, back at the 15-yard line. Eric Yarber normally does the punt returning. Play Green down at the 20 with a marker. And he's back to the 28, and there's a penalty flag at midfield. field early. Now, do the Skins want the ball at the 29 or? Eligible downfield, number 52, 20 team, penalty decline. First down. They'll take it where they've got it. Well, that's because it already burned off 11 seconds. We went from two minutes to a minute and 49 and to punt it again. Shoots another 11 or 12 seconds. And Rams are tough on the punt return. Their special teams against the punt return, very good. All of that factored in, I'm sure, in Joe Gibbs' decision. Well, they're in a situation where 60 and 65 yards isn't good enough. They have to go 70 for the touchdown. From the 30, Williams under pressure, dumps it off for Bryant, and he's going to stay in bounds at the 39, and the Redskins have to hurry it up. And the Rams give up that pass as long as Washington wants to throw it. Second and one. And it's caught, but again, the clock keeps running. It's did here at the 47-yard line. All this has been called before the offensive team really came out on the field. They know what they're going to do. They've got to be thinking now about stopping it. they say, at the 48. I don't know that that does Washington that much good. Well, why are the Rams letting the receivers up so quickly? They're not even holding the Washington receivers down on the ground. They're not even getting on top of them. Second and five at the 48-yard line. Pressure on. He escapes the grass. He goes deep, but only the oh. Rams are there. There are all kinds of flags, and it's dropped by Gar Johnson. Gary Clark was held. He tried to break it downfield. And he was held by the defender at the 30-yard line, and the flags were all over. And this is going to go against Los Angeles, I think. With 40 seconds. And that'll be an automatic first down, and here we go, folks. <laughs> Watch Gary Clark working with Johnny Johnson. Johnson is oh. just not going to let him get beyond him, man. Williams was looking right <laughs> at him <laughs> at the time. Oh, how could they call that a penalty? <laughs> Drama, and it's thickening. What a, uh, you know, it's only a five-yard penalty, though. It's not that big of a deal. Well, it's an automatic first down. That counts. Yep. yep. The call is interference. Number 20, defense, first down. 40 seconds now. At the 43-yard line. Well, they're going oh, to go up to the 31. From the spot, yeah, they, they had originally put it down outside the 40. It goes to the 31. Now it is a big deal. That's the difference between defensive holding, which is five yards mm -hmm. and a first down, and interference, which goes to the spot of the foul. Yep. That's a big difference. First down at the 31-yard line. Williams pressured, dumps it incomplete. He was almost sacked. 35 seconds now, and second and 10. And Robinson thought they should have called in the grasp.
That's the play being signaled in to Doug Williams. And it would not be above Joe Gibbs to think of something inside. It's going to be very difficult to get outside on the ramp. Outside where a receiver, and it is almost in the grass. The Rams are not going to let him to the sidelines. Grasp and control. Not second, the situation. Second and ten from the 31. Williams firing it, and it is caught out of bounds at the 15. Goes Gary Clark. First down. Oh, great effort on the part of Williams and Gary Clark. And that is nothing more than a timing pattern all the way. The deep out pattern, it takes a strong arm, and that ball was perfectly thrown. Ballet on the sidelines by Gary Clark. Working against Gary Gray, one of the best in the business. He knew he had help on the inside. But he laid off, and Gary Clark made a good move to the sideline. Clark and Monk both go to the left at the 15-yard line. And Williams looks in that direction and goes for the end zone. No, no, Art Monk. Oh, I thought he had a touchdown. Mm. For a split second, it looked like it. Boy, it sure did. Williams had it right in there. 24 seconds. This is Kelvin Bryant on a pickup. Good block by Bryant. And there is Monk. Ooh. Art Monk Ooh. for the second time tonight. Third time tonight, in reality, drops. A perfectly thrown pass. That is a major mistake by Art Monk. Mm -hmm. Second and ten, Monk and Clark to the right this time. And Monk goes in motion. For Monk again, can't hold it, intercepted by Irvin. Leroy Irvin has just salted it for the Rams. Oh, and what and nightmares for Art Monk tonight. John Robinson and the Rams will take a very pleasant red-eye flight back to LAX. A difficult ball in the sense that it was thrown hard in traffic. Art Monk is going to take a hit, but this was a pass again that he has to catch. It's a well-thrown ball by Doug Williams. Beautifully thrown. One you catch if you're Art Monk. He's caught so many of them in his career. Johnny Johnson was in there with the shot. But going back to the play before that, these are two that Art Monk is going to think about for a long time to come. Both of them, these passes were game winners. I mean, this is no gimme. Let's not say that. That's no gimme. That ball is way out in front of him, and it certainly can't keep, be compared to the first one he dropped. But still, a catchable ball. Everett goes to one knee to end the game. the agony of the Washington Redskins. Leroy Irvin on the suspended list a couple of weeks ago. He had been on the inactive list before that. Picks up the intercept and the Rams are now 3-7 and seven and the Redskins are now 7-3 and three and lead Dallas by two. And our thanks to Steve Hurt downstairs and to George Hill and Malibu Kelly Hayes of Topanga up here in the booth the support tonight. Al Michaels along with Frank Gifford and Dan Deardorff and that's the story from RFK Stadium in Washington. And I imagine that this game was well received in Chicago and San Francisco. Mm -hmm, because they are both 8-2. and two. There's your final again. Rams 30. Skins 26. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Pontiac, America's road car company. We build excitement by Miller Genuine Draft, Cold Filter Draft Beer. It's as real as it gets. By Tandy Computer there is no better value. And by Magnavox, smart product for smart people. Magnavox, smart, very smart. This Saturday on ABC Sports Live, tennis coverage begins with the stakes match presented by Minolta. Yvonne Lendl, John McEnroe, Pat Cash, and Stefan Edberg compete in a $1 million format. And then next Monday night, we'll be at the Kingdom for the AFC West rivalry featuring the Los Angeles Raiders and Bo Jackson against the Seattle Seahawks. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. See you next Monday.